This is a presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Welcome Highlander soccer fans to Choctaw Middle School Stadium. We got a great match, two great matches coming up for you tonight with the Oklahoma Sports Network brought to you by the Lot Marketing Group. First, we got the varsity ladies, the Choctaw Yellow Jackets against the MacArthur Highlanders. Then second, we will have the MacArthur Highlanders visiting the Choctaw Yellow Jackets for the men. So we got beautiful weather out here for soccer tonight. Uh, it should be a really great Really great time. Got Rich Frederick and John Burke right now, and uh, Kobe Edwards should be joining us in a little while. So we're going to send you to a commercial break for a little bit here, and we'll be back with you. Hey, what's going on? I switched to H&R Block this year and had one of their experts do my taxes for me. Kind of a big win. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're so on top of it. They guaranteed my taxes were 100% accurate. And my maximum refund or I get my money back. Wow, nice. I don't even know if my guy's got any guarantees. You should definitely switch it up. We're going to go do a victory lap now. Get a 100% accurate return and your max refund or your money back. It's better with... Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home, or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. Waste is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solutions. Call or click today. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A better design, flowers and gifts is under new ownership. And we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoma, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. 
At Miller Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we offer preventive maintenance agreements, summer tune-ups, and service calls. During the summer when your air conditioner breaks, you have to give us a call. We'll with preventive maintenance agreements that prevents that. We go out, service the air conditioners, and prep them so they don't fail on you in the peak time of the year. The U.S. Department of Energy states that you can save up to 30% of your utility bill by having your system properly maintenanced. It's real red wine vinegar and olive oil blend. It's called the juice. And at Jersey Mike's, it adds that jazz to your sub. Add a flavor zing with the juice. Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Lawton's newest hangout, 5370 Northwest Cash Road. A family-friendly atmosphere featuring their award-winning pizza and calzone. Made fresh daily from their secret family recipe. With handcrafted burgers, wings, appetizers, salad, and homemade desserts, including deep-fried banana pudding. Come hang out with us. The Hangout, 5370 Northwest Cash Road in Lawton. Scooter's Coffee, world-class coffee rooted in quality, with two locations to serve you in Lawton and Elgin. Wake up to the amazing aroma of quality, from their hot and ice drinks to blenders, smoothies, teas, to even their great food delights. Or why not try their at-home coffees or coffee on the go? Locally owned and operated, Scooter's in Lawton and Elgin. Scooter's, rooted in quality. At Whitehead Plumbing, our mission is to be a leading full-service plumbing contractor. We have dedicated over 20 years perfecting our expertise in Southwest Oklahoma with our craftsmanship and customer service. Whether you have a water, sewer, or gas line that needs to be replaced or repaired, you can always count on us to be there. We offer free estimates and have 24-7 emergency services available. We'll work around the clock and are committed to providing our customers with impeccable services. Call Whitehead Plumbing today for all your plumbing needs. Welcome back to the Oklahoma Sports Network. Rich Frederick, joined by Kobe Edwards now. And we've got John Burke, of course, on the camera, our cameraman, cameraman extraordinaire. Uh, about to get things started with the ladies' match. So it should be a pretty good game tonight, Kobe. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, uh, looks like a great facility we get to play in tonight. We've got beautiful weather. I think the girls actually probably are going to be feeling it being hot would be my guess. Yeah, it's a little a little warm out. A little warm, especially when you're not used to it. We got the Choctaw High School Air Force JROTC Color Guard presenting the colors tonight. Not love an Air Force guy myself, but love I to see love it. seeing it. Yep. Got the ladies getting lined up, ready to go. 
Yeah, it looks like we're going to get like the full, like a nice full ceremony out of this evening. I Got the it. color guard and the refs are going to do it all official like with the lineups. All the pomp and circumstance for this evening. Yep, they're going to walk them out. All right, so we're going to – got the ladies go ahead and get on the field here, and the color guard is going to come to the middle of the field and present the colors. And Mr. John is going to get us onto the colors once they get presented. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of colors in the National Anthem. favorite song in the world right there all right so as you can see by the the cadets with the flags out there it is a windy one tonight well they were holding on weren't they i think it should just lift so we're trying to get some windows open up here get a little bit of airflow up through the box sharing the box with our pa announcers so there might be some background noise. Starting lineup for MacArthur High School is number one, Taylor Dominguez. Number three, Layla Mosby. So no surprises with the eight, MacArthur starting Martin lineup, Kobe. Number 11. Lily no, I think uh, it's about what, what, what you would expect to see, uh, what you'd hope to see. And, number 14, yeah. Um, number 19. Be anxious to see how two, how we come out Ann tonight, Hayes. what formation we're in, two, what uh, how they move the girls number around and where they position Ann them. And, um, and so that'll be fun to see. Natalie yeah, and, and to see if they come out here the ready to find a dub. You know what I'm saying? Ready to find that W. And, yes, it's been a rough Bear, season Bear, through Bear. district play. Uh, and now, <laughs> you can say A lot of close matches, you know. But – yeah, just to see if they come out here fired up, ready to get a Number W, zero, and, and end the season Ryan on a high Hope. note. Yeah, I think how they come out and uh, their mentality and their approach um, is going to be big. 
they look, you know, just watching them for a minute during warm-ups and looking at them out there in the lineup right now. They look mentally like maybe into it and loose. And <laughs> yeah. It, there's a lot of reading into that, though, so don't, don't hang too much on that. Yeah, they look like they're loose. They're having a good time out there lined up or fighting a bee off. I don't know. But, you know, when they were warming up, they looked loose. They looked like they were having fun. So, and that's, and that's part of the recipe for success for this Highlanders team, at least. You know? Definitely. And I think, you know, one of the things that a season like this gives you, and, um, obviously not what you want ever in any circumstance, uh, but you got a couple of games left, and it puts your team in a situation where you're just – the pressure's gone. You're comfortable. No one's talking about yep. playoffs. No one's talking about, um, you know, winning state. It's it's just, yeah. let's I mean, just go out there and play. And, and, and a season like this really puts things into perspective for them. You know, yeah. really like, okay, we, sometimes you, you never want it to happen, but sometimes it happening is great for the follow-on season. For sure. As far as, okay, maybe we aren't the big dogs on the block right now. Get knocked down a pe- down off the pedestal a little bit, and okay, now we need to put in that work, you know, and make these juniors that'll be seniors next year yeah, hungry. Absolutely, absolutely, I totally agree. And I mean, I think there's uh, there's definitely good to to be brought from it. And um, man, if nothing else, it'll show you that you've got to go out and earn. Yeah. Whatever you think you might be capable of in a season, you're gonna have to go out and do it game after game. No one's gonna get to just give it to you. And, um, yeah, I think they hopefully have learned that lesson in spades this season. Oh, Lord, I hope so. I hope this is the last season we learned that lesson for, right. for, for a good <laughs> while now. So it looks like they're getting their last second pep talk from the captains or the coaches and So key to success tonight for the Lady Highlanders. What do you think, Kobe? Man, I would say first, Rich. I would say that they need to they really to just piggyback on what you were talking about earlier. It's how do they come out? Do they come out flat or do they come out in this game really going to win and in it? And I think if they come out that way, um, then that's that's a massive key to success. Yeah, and I think it's you know. Uh, doesn't look like a whole lot of adjustments have been made as far as since last game. Um, as far as formation or personnel. So the key is going to be, honestly, some of these juniors stepping up on the field and really taking over this match. You got Aspen Edwards and Elena Burke in the center of the field that can, can take over a match. And, and that's what we need them to do. Of course, with the back line, too. You got Lily and Avery back there solidifying that. Looks like we're going to redo this throw in. Something's going on. Taylor's going to scoop that one up before a yellow jacket, a lady yellow jacket, could get in there on that ball. These lines are going to be hard to see tonight for I think at least for a while until the until it gets dark and the line the lights get on it. A big ball downfield for the Lady Highlanders, kind of switching that field from a defensive side to the offensive side. Heck yeah, let's keep it down here. Ball in by Barley. Nobody in the middle to really gather it in. You got five Lady Yellow Jackets in the middle of the field there where that ball was coming. And then you got number 27, Nat, trying to fight for it, but really fighting a losing battle there. Yeah. Yeah, you're sending it in. You know, it would be nice to have some numbers there, but um, this didn't, didn't pan out that way. I think we did have one. I think Nat was there in the. Yeah, Nat was the only. She one. was the only one there, and the it, lone wolf. It didn't come straight to her, or she, not close enough where she could get to it, so she wasn't able to do anything with it. Number 
Yellow Jackets controlling possession here to start off the match. Highlanders with a few flashes. Nothing big, though. No, it very much feels like everybody's still just feeling out the game and settling in. That's a long, or a high ball from the Yellow Jackets. Look like the wind. Definitely. <laughs> wind stopped it from going any further. Which, this is Oklahoma. We'll definitely have that. We got a break for the Yellow Jackets. That ball's in cool. nicely. Great job by Lily Smith to cut it out. Great ball, though, by the winger there. For it the was. Jackets. Nice pace on it. Lily was just able to just get to it. Taylor lets that one roll out for a Lady Highlanders goal kick. Well, it was a dangerous look there. Yeah. That's a deadly spot to have oh, somebody Lord, yeah. be open yeah. like that with the ball at their feet. Thankfully, she just doesn't get the the shot she's wanting. But yeah, didn't get a really good hit on it. Lucky for the Lady Highlanders there. I noticed that with the men and the women this year, just kind of – there's a lot of times where that ball is just given up in the defensive third. And that's not where you want to give up the ball. No. I kind of like to, I, as much as I hate to say it and I hate seeing it, I'd rather see a long clearance. For sure. It's a good option. It's just not the option you want to you want to lean on the most, you yeah, know, but that's 100%. not like it's not a tool in the toolbox. Good step up there for Layla. Layla Phillips. Once again, making a defensive play. Layla Phillips what after throw. returning from injury. Just Goodness. huge. Oh, gosh. That ball's in for a Lady Yellow Jackets goal. So I think Lily tried to shield there and let Taylor just scoop it up. And maybe Taylor thought Lily was going to clear it out. Um, or Taylor didn't adjust quickly enough to what she saw Lily doing. Or maybe, honestly, the Lady Yellow Jacket uh, just wasn't going to be denied and she just did a great job fighting her way around Lily. Um, it was a smart play to, to block it and let Lily just pick it up with her, with her hands. But it, that's not how it worked out. Yeah. I, I would have liked to see Lily just, you know, take the hit on that and put it out for a corner kick. <laughs> At this point, yeah, that sounds like <laughs> a really good idea. Here we go. Natalie on a run. She got Layla Mosby running with her in the middle. Great defensive play by number 21 of the Lady Yellow Jackets. A corner kick for the Highlanders. Aspen Edwards tries to get a foot on it on the backside there. Good throw by Kaylee. Here's a oh. control. Just, Layla Mosby was just in an offside position over there. Did somebody play it to her? Did Barley maybe play that to her? Yeah. That big defensive play back there against Gosh. against Nat was Macy Bartlett. She's a senior for the Lady Yellow Jackets. Man, that was a great look right there. That's that one hurts a little bit. Yeah, you hate to see him uh, squander those opportunities. Good turn by Deanne. Oh, good, good ball there. 
had a lot on it though, and Barley wasn't able to handle it. Which I mean, it was like a rocket coming to her feet. So it's fair. Yeah. Um, but it was a she threaded the needle there. Deanne did really well just to even get it to Barley. Another goal kick for the Lady Yellow Jackets. Goes out for uh, Lady Highlander throw in. Starting to kind of settle in in the offensive third here for the time being. You got one Lady Yellow Jacket back here. And you get the foul. It was good work there by, by Aspen. At least Mason on Aspen Edwards. Really good work. Aspen just being able to get back in between the player and the ball made that happen. Layla Phillips coming up as a wing back. Nice header out. Aspen's going to intercept this one. Great job by Aspen stepping into that. There you go. Layla Phillips making a big defensive play again. She is having a great game so far the first eight minutes of this. Layla Mosby's we go. in that work. Using her athleticism. Phillips to Edwards, Good up work. to Burke. Elena's trying to pick out a forward on a run, but no one's really acting like they want to make that run. You really want to see Deanna Barley putting a hand up over there, you know, ready to come through for Elena. 100%, yes. Would love to see that. And I mean, that's that's been a consistent struggle this season is just trying to create some offensive production. Yeah. Elena was looking for them, though. Mm -hmm. She was <laughs> looking and waiting. She knew she was too far out to, to try and take a shot from there and, and was evaluating options. I, I don't think a shot would have been a bad idea from there, though, either. She you know, has, with the, the wind foot. and with the wind to her back like she's got right now, yeah. actually, I would agree with that. She has the foot, the wind to her back. The ball can do weird things with the wind to your back and really mess up a goalkeeper. It totally can. Good job by Layla winning back to that. Quickly giving away, though. Layla Phillips across here, though, to step in on that. Nice. Boy, she had a great game as a left back tonight so far. It's really good to see. There's at least a handful of Lady Highlanders out here that really want to see this end up in their favor tonight. Yeah, and, you know, their their play shows that, I think, is, yeah, yeah. that's the point, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, you can you can tell it by, just by the way they're playing. You got Elena and, Elena and Aspen playing well. You got Layla, uh, Layla Phillips playing super well. Yeah, agree on all that. Lily's back there hustling to everything. And as usual, we don't want to take away from what the other ladies are doing on the field. We just kind of point out the, the ones that are standing out right now. It's a good switch by Barley looking for Nat on the, on the left go. side. Oh. Layla Phillips going to outrun to that one. Stop the attack. Great job by Layla to get back and stop the attack, let her team get set. Big ball out by Taylor. Eventually gathered in by Barley and Aspen. 
in the midfield. Dean loses it on the wing, but goes out for a Highlander throw. Oh, nice. Well done. I like Good that effort by Deanne. By Deanne. Yeah, yes. see more of that. A little aggressiveness. Oh, that's a good ball. That's a good ball by Deanne. Choctaw doing a great job of working the passes up the field. Just kind of lose it in the midfield. When they skip their midfielders and they play the long ball to the forwards is when we're in trouble. <laughs> We're just we're one ball from one of them center backs that really sees the field well, you know, and taking off. Yeah, and they I mean they've shown that they're they're able. Yeah. Ball goes off for a Highlander throw. Over to nope, not over defense. There you go. Nice ball in. A little more angle on that. More towards the back post. We had a good chance. But love the love the attempt. What's number seventeen's name? Number seventeen is Elise Mason. Elise Mason, she's a heck of a player. Yeah, she's got a good. Scorer. She's got a good touch on the ball too. She has the lone goal of this match so far. She just got a really good knack for controlling the pace, and you know she's she send I've seen her seen her send several through balls through, or uh, just really puts a very finesse touch on it. Oh, it's Peyton. Oh, at least had the assist on the goal. She did not have the goal. Peyton had the goal. Number 13. Peyton Heath, number 13, is the one that is the goal scorer. Oh. Layla, Mosby, or Layla Phillips again with the hustle to Good work slow back the there. attack. Avery oh, Dowdy nice. And, Avery Dowdy comes and cleans up the mess. Oh, no. Just held on side there by Lily. And there goes Kaylee Moody, the biggest player on the field. <laughs> in, her, <laughs> in her own mind. In her own mind, yes, absolutely. All right, we got Mason coming in for Deanne. I think that's a good a good change to make at this point. Uh getting the the more experience in there. Well, you know, and just I think you just you got to look for something to work, you know, and yeah. just because something's not working right now doesn't mean it doesn't can't work or doesn't work a lot of the time, but um right now we're we're just we're struggling with um Produce an offense, I think. We've got a just, foul down there and a dangerous – sorry to cut you Yeah, I know you're right. This dangerous is a nice opportunity. Aspen to put a ball in. Backside. Or just in the net however you want to. How about that? Do something with it. <laughs> Ball's oh, in. Oh, gosh. Elena, looks to Elena was the right there. Looked like Aspen tried to pop it up and just set them up for uh, a finish, uh, which we were close to, rather than just a direct shot. I'd, I'd like to see her more on the direct shot. I think so, those. too, especially with the wind and she the does, positioning of the ball and yeah, the, she does the foot a lot, she's got. She does a lot of the, you know, the services in, and she's not 
She doesn't do bad at it either. No. But, you know, I want to see one of those absolutely drilled on, like a rocket on frame. Totally agree. I know she has it. And even if it's saved by the goalkeeper, it still gives that goalkeeper something to think about the next time. Right. right. Oh, here we go. Great play by Layla Mosby. Goalkeeper stays oh. on her line. Get out of there for a corner. Out for a corner kick for the Lady Highlanders. Layla had to run there, and the goalkeeper stayed on her line, which is a benefit for to Layla mm -hmm. on that run. Just Definitely. Like, Great defensive play by the Lady Yellow Jackets. Uh, Avery coming up, putting numbers in the box. Mosby with another shot. Barley with a shot. Oh, oh. that goes in. It's a Lady Highlanders <laughs> tying goal. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes it's just better to be lucky. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't have to be pretty. It we, just has and, to get by. And we just got lucky. But that was great. Good job on Barley being there and and getting a shot on it. And I guess it just got lost in the feet. You know, it keeper just lost track of it. By the time she saw it, it was uh, so far away from her that a dive couldn't save it. And man, we're in. We're tied up. It's great news. Good job to Barley. So Barley with the game tying goal. Knots it up at one for the Lady Highlanders and the Lady Yellow Jackets. Oh. We've got a kick here for the Lady Yellow Jackets. This could be a dangerous one right mm -hmm. here. Mm-hmm. It's like number 20. Looks Savannah. Like looks like Savannah... Jovanovic standing over the ball. Kicking into the wind, which is good, but can cause some so weird is, flight for the keeper. So so this is, you know, it's for us, but um, one of the, my problems, honestly, with some of the refereeing is... What? what? Got a foul. I found the box against the Lady Yellow Jackets. So that ball was placed on the 18-yard line. When the ball is touching that 18, it is supposed to be inside the 18. Kind of like the ball is not out of bounds until it is fully over the line. It is not outside of the penalty area until it's fully over the line. So if you place a ball on the 18-yard line or on the edge of the penalty area like that, it should have been a penalty kick. Wow. Not going to complain about it. No. It benefited super, us right there. Super glad it wasn't. <laughs> well, I like seeing Elena play defense like that. Yeah. We need to see it more often. It's a good we ball. Up, up, up in front of Mason. <laughs> those, oh, huh? those balls are tough. I, think she, I don't know. Maybe I was out of bounds on the side. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough ball, though, because when you're playing with the, back, you know, the wind at your back, yeah. on turf, that ball just goes. carries and carries. It goes. Whether it's in the air or on the ground, it goes. Substitution for the Lady Yellow Jackets. I'll pick it up for the quick throw in to Layla Mosby. Look at her competing. I love it. Phillips going to be on this one again. Nice ball. Up to Nat. Nat's going to. I'd like to see her just take her full speed 1v1. Oh, wow. There we go. Got a foul called against the Lady Yellow Jackets. Once again here, I wouldn't mind seeing something go far post. I know it's 36 yards out from goal, but I know she has the foot. Oh, she can it. boot at 50, so that's. But that's a beautiful Back service. In. Oh, Mason almost gets She's on the end trying. of it to save it. 
took out someone, didn't take out someone's, but hit someone's car in the parking lot there. And that ball just keeps going. Golly. So once again, the, I'm, I don't know if that's her decision or the direction she's getting from the sideline to uh, to kind of float it up in there and create a scoring opportunity on the backside. Again, not a bad strategy. It's a perfectly good strategy. But with the wind and where she's at, man, I'd sure like to just see yeah, her I mean, drill it and try this, to put it in the net. This wind is what makes those balls sometimes rainbow right over the goalie just under the, under the crossbar. Or just move in the air, you know. It's coming yeah. at you, and then it's, it wobbles left or wobbles right it's on you. Going wide and ends up turning into yeah, the Yeah, exactly. What a throw. Dad gum, what a talent. Big throw did not come in bounds, so either that or it went in, went out. Either way, it's turned over to Lady Highlanders. Looks like Mason's moved to the midfield. Oh, gosh. It's a good move by Barley to save that. Or the wing. Mason's moved to the left wing, and Nat has moved to the right wing. Coach might have there seen a matchup, matchup she likes. Or Elena oh, with a good. ball in for Nat. That was beautiful. Beautifully right timed, there. beautiful pace. Nat just didn't have enough to get yeah, to it. Yeah, just a little out in front. Um, once again, can probably blame a little bit as the breeze. It's not as bad as it was earlier, but the ball does scoot along the turf. That was a nice ball, though. I mean, it was, it was right there. Deanne coming back in for Nat. I like that we're switching the wingers up, trying to make something work. Yep. Absolutely. It's good footwork. Oh, that ball came in quick from Aspen. Well defended by number 15, Shaley, Shaley Ferris. Oh. Shaley? Shaley Ferris. Thank, thank goodness we have the PA announcer up here, also the coach's wife, to help us out with some of these pronunciations because I really hate hate butchering people's names. That ball's up over. Just a little too heavy for number 19 to run on to, Sabrina. Good kick. What a drop kick. There's that, there's that girl again, Layla Phillips. Yep, she's having a good game. It always seems to be at the right place when the ball's on this side of the field. Oh, good ball. That ball's in. Just a little too heavy for Mosby. Yeah, she, I mean, she was a good, what, two yards off the back off the line. and Yeah. just she, That was a big run-up she was going to have to do. Yeah, just and a little the, too heavy for her to get to it before mm -hmm, the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Well defended by Kaylee Moody. Just denying space. Mosby turns around her defender, gets the ball across. Defended by number 21, Macy Bartlett again. Oh, good ball. Not quite cleared out enough. Oh. I like, I like it. To, I like to see that shot from Deanne. Yeah. Well done by the goalkeeper to play it. Well, she gets a little more on that, and that goes over her head and to the back post. I mean, that's yeah, or if, that know, was a smart that was a smart shot. If she can't quite make the catch on that, the goalkeeper that is, and you know, you have people up there. Elena was ready to throw that mm -hmm. one. I like that, though. She didn't just stand there and hold the ball and look at the referee and ask why. She just gave it up yep. back to defend the throw. Yep. No matter how many times you ask the referee <laughs> if they're sure, I guarantee their call will not change. Great job by Lily to come through the player to 
make that stop. And Avery then stepping up to, to yeah, go Avery, get it. Avery cleaned it up. Oh, that was close. Out for a Lady Highlander throw. Good attempt by Barley to just put a header on it and get it up over the line. Just came in a little short. So I talked to Mosby and Avery last week. We're going to call her Mosby because Layla and Layla is yeah, too, it's tough. too crazy. I talked to Mosby last week just about her athleticism. She said she's, she's a baller. She's a gamer. And and that's what she was born to do. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> that's much. That's what she said. I, I'm summarizing. Okay, but well, I like her confidence. Basically, I would have to agree with her. Basically, she's just she likes to compete. She's a competitor. Yeah, she is a competitor. There's soccer no doubt about not, it. Soccer is not new to her. She is a dual sport athlete. Great job by Lily and Avery to clean that up oh, back there. Oh gosh, just not enough. Ball goes. Over the crossbar. And that's the kind of chaos you want to create, right? Yes. That's why you as put a, balls into the box. You put numbers into the box. As a, um, and that young lady is wanting that one back. Oh, six, my gosh. From she'll six be, yards out, she was wanting that back. She'll be thinking about that one for a while. Gosh. Lady Yellow Jack is starting to mount a, a more sustained attack. Phillips steps in, gets the ball to Elena. Elena is looking up, looking for Mosby to make a run. That's kind of one where you want – you kind of miss Mosby having the more soccer experience and, and making that diagonal run the opposite direction mm -hmm. so Elena can play it over knowing the wind's at their back. Out for a Lady Highlanders throw in. This first half brought to you by Lawton Bell Bonds and the Lawton Marketing Group. Lawton Marketing Group has been our title sponsor for two years now. Might look at them to get a third year out of them <laughs> next year. But we do appreciate oh. everything they do. Foul called against Aspen Edwards. Well known to the Lawton Marketing Group that we were just talking about. <laughs> We know her a little bit. A little bit. So our halftime guest has arrived. We're going to talk to one of the young men for the Highlanders during halftime. Get his take on the Highlanders and their season and what they need to do tonight and Thursday night. Nice little ball looped up over there. Well played by the Lady Highlanders. I didn't see who it was. Oh, Aspen. oh, nice ball. Good ball by Elena. And Mosby's going to be through oh. on the shot just a little bit wide. That was good work by Aspen, Elena, and uh, Layla Mosby. It was I, really well done. I feel like if Layla would have held that for one more time. I though, agree. She had some space. Well, she had the foul, too. <laughs> it cut very potentially, yeah. I think she rushed it a bit. And normally, I'm, you know, I'm applauding you for not losing your chance. But I feel like the way the positioning of the defender was, she really just kind of had some. Yeah, she, defender. She had another stride or two, at least. Yeah, that defender was coming in hot. But I, I – think she would have had the foul. The keeper wasn't coming out. Yeah, the keeper was on her line. She had her dead to rights if she got about three more yards mm -hmm. closer. Totally agree. Great work either way, though. Yeah, I mean, it's, that, it's those flashes that we need. That backs that defense up a little bit, knowing Mosby's speed. Well, she did show it off there, too. So you can beat that back line. So they are not going to – I don't foresee them playing super high on her knowing that she has that breakaway speed to right. come with. Easy 
you throw in, controlled oh. by Aspen Edwards. Pushed up. Mosby on the ball again. Almost drugged down by her caller. Oh. Ball goes out for a Lady Highlander throw. Moody tried to get that one to go in. It stayed wide. Step by Deanne, oh, put pressure oh, oh, oh. on there. That's kind of aggression you really want to see. If, uh -huh. I, were not, if I were not, you really want to see the aggression and the want, the drive to win. Mm -hmm. From any of your players. Another great throw. Highlanders slowly working the ball up from the back. Under six minutes left in the half, though, you kind of want to see them kind of push the pace a little bit. Great job by Lily. Ooh, well defended. Great job on the defense by Lily. It's great work. Kind of want to see them push the pace a little bit, though, instead of, you know, the, the small passes in the back. You know you have Mosby up there. You had the wind at your back. Play a long one. You know, push the pace. Make them make them run. If you end up coming out of this 2-1 for the halftime, it's huge. It's massive. Oh. That ball was put in by the shoulder. Number seven. Well, unfortunately, Richard goes the other way, and they get one. Uh, and it's kind of like, I would say, a consequence of not pushing the pace there. Yeah. The team seems a little flat. Good work by Deanne to win that ball. Just nobody nobody to receive in the midfield. There she is again. Good ball by Phillips. Nice flick by Mason. One more, one more. Oh, good oh, ball. Yeah. Yes, go, go Dean. Dean running onto that one. That oh. Trying to make a move inside, just a little too heavy of a touch. About four minutes left in the half. Highlanders down two to one. Oh, nice fake. That's over here. What do you need? Great steal by Phillips. Oh. Lucky break. I don't, 
I don't know if the ball can get on this side of the field without Layla's foot touching it. <laughs> it's an amazing play tonight. So Aspen's been out for the past maybe five minutes. I'm not sure uh, if she's. Yeah, and you can tell uh, the difference in the uh, defensive midfield play. I don't know if they have a defensive midfielder or if they put five on the back. I think they moved Barley to defensive mid. Mason into attacking. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't know if Elena's on the on the wing or if no, she's the Deanne's supposed to be the wing and she's lagging back or what. Just some energy. They need some energy. They do. It's very it's flat. Just, it's flat. The runs are not. I mean, with the exception of a couple of players, it just looks blah. Un uninspired. Yeah. Yeah. It's sluggish. They don't want it. Good move. Elena trying to work that sideline over there. Goes out for a Lady Highlanders throw. Just over a minute and a half here until halftime. Okay, no pressure up in the box. We've just got a shell around it. It's like we're giving it to them. I don't understand that. Got Pasquale up here taking notes of what we're saying, hopefully for the men's match. <laughs> About the pressure and the energy. It's just odd. You know, you get down here into the attacking third or even more than that, the ball's in the box, and it's it's literally like we form a shell outside around the box and just let them own the box by themselves, or maybe we've got one player in there. That was a great header up over. Good opportunity there. Good chance taken. Substitution in the last minute and a half by the Lady Yellow Jackets. Number 18 coming in for number three. Number three, I think, has the coolest hairdo I've seen <laughs> this year. Yep, there was some work put into that, that's for sure. 100%. Barley gets that ball at the sideline. Just Winger's kind of lagging back, not ready to make those runs. I don't know if they're getting caught in the defensive line or, or what. Oh, Mosby was ready to take off on that. If that ball would have went through, it would have been dangerous. All right, that's going to bring the second or the first half to a close. Scores two to one in favor of the Choctaw Lady Yellow Jackets. We're going to talk to a guest really quick. Number ten for the varsity men, Pasquale Arredondo, senior captain. Uh, Pasquale, tell us a little bit about the season. How the season's going for you? How you're feeling about tonight? You know, whatever you want to talk about. Well, uh, the season hasn't been going the greatest. I mean, we're here, it's do or die. It hasn't went as we wanted, but we still got playoff contentions, and we're here to capitalize on what we can, and just, we're here to play. We feel kind of disrespected that it's a Choctaw senior night while we're here. I mean, our senior <laughs> night is supposed to win, so we're coming to play today. I like it. I like that a lot. Oh, it's not senior night. It's not? No. Oh, that's what somebody said. No, that's she just said. No, just go with it. It's senior night, dude. Keep it, like. Keep it up. Keep it up. That's right. It is senior yeah, night. Up. Keep just the O with it. Keep the energy up. So <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we've noticed a huge like. So one game to another. So you have the Durant game, right? Durant, you go down quick, three zero. Yep. Come back. It, you, you didn't play bad. Like as a team, team did not play bad. Come back for a three two loss, right? Mm -hmm. So so it was really impressive. That, it was <laughs> quite impressive. Actually, quite impressive. Yeah. And then you have a Duncan match where. Things seem to flow pretty well yep. and, you know, come away 3-0. Is that correct? Yes, 3-0. And then you go to McAllister and things kind of fell apart a little bit. It did. It did. 
All right. Uh, and then you come back, and you have Noble, and there you go, 3-0 again. So tell me what what's the difference as far as the team – how things are played out, how you know chemistry or what it is. What is it that is making you know this this game? You have this MacArthur Highlanders. Next game you have another MacArthur Highlanders. It's just totally night and day. I think every game we got a different challenge, and uh, it's, it's really just. I think we don't come in with the right mindset. Sometimes we come in with like we're gonna win. We're too we're too good like that. So I, I think sometimes, as, like, as we were saying in the girls' game, the energy is kind of down. We don't play with that energy or that need to, to win. So I think we just got to start coming in with that need to be hungry and be the first one to take that punch towards the other team and, and yeah. do something. Yeah. As you see, we get scored on first majority of the time, and then yeah. we have to come back. Yeah, and that's, that's one thing I saw like with the fight against Santa Fe South. Now, let's talk about the Santa Fe South game. That, like, that's a game that yeah. 9-3 last year, right? Mm-hmm. Previous year was – nine to one i think or ten to one yep. something something ugly right and then to come out this year three zero right uh and one one mistake you can kind of chalk up to a, a mistake by the goalkeeper right and then which happens i'm not yeah. dogging on frank at all i love frank he's a great great goalkeeper to have back there like, every, everybody makes mistakes here. i mean it's yeah, yeah. yeah. and then it, one goal that was absolutely beautifully earned with the cross off the he- on the header, yep. and then a really kind of weak penalty kick, you know, in the first half. So, so really, I you mean, mean weak call. We, we really it was a weak call. Yeah, yes. weak call. It was a weak call for a penalty kick. So, so really, that's not it's not a bad loss. Yep. You know, how, what did you guys bring away from that as a first uh, district game? Well, we played them our first game of the season, not even like as a tournament game. So we took that game serious. We took notes from that first game, and we came in that second game with the mindset, let's try to shock the world and, and win. I mean, we, did, we didn't win, but we came out there and we tried the best we could. I mean, we had mistakes on offense and defense. We could have scored a couple. It could have been a closer game. We just took that. Uh, we got to be more as a team because we, we, a lot of us, we, including myself, we pick, we pick like – we get on to people, raise our voice. So we're starting to get better as a team. Yeah. Become more brothers. Talk, talk to us about that, Pasquale, about how you would say that that exact thing, the, the vibe on the team, the team aspect of the team, the relationship that all you guys have, the brotherhood or, or lack thereof, this that you have this season versus maybe last year and, and maybe even the year previous. How do you feel like – have you all grown? Are, are, you, are you moving in a, in a good direction? What do you, what do you think, think about that? I think we've grown uh, a lot as a team in the past couple of years because it was just all senior, all senior. But now we got sophomore, juniors, and freshmen speaking up and saying how they feel, and, that, and that's what we need because it was all seniors. And it butted heads a lot. Yeah. We had a lot of people butting heads. That's what we had at the beginning of the season this year. A lot of people butting heads. But over time, we can be better as a team. So what, what would you say is because I think we've noticed being up here in the booth, watching you guys play, watching the dynamic on the field, you go down, bad things happen, maybe an open look on a shot and it gets missed. And I, you can just see that um, the, the way you guys are interacting is in a much healthier way than you did over the last couple of years. What, what, would, what do you attribute the, can, the difference to? We can also see that the, when there's unhealthy interaction – it's kind of those games I was talking about, the McAllisters, yep. the you know, what I'm saying. Sure, there has you're right. There yeah. has been some of it, but yeah, it's been so, much more few and far between. Yeah. And I think as a whole, it's been it seemed much healthier yeah. from from our vantage point. I, yes, I think more as a team, we've been like uh, this year. We've been with each other 24 seven. We practice till five every day. We see each other every day. We're always with each other, and I mean, it's either going to be it's us versus everybody else. That's how that's what we tell the team. Yeah, everybody everybody hates us. Everybody wants to see us lose. We got nobody else but each other. Amen. So that's, that's, that's what we say in the locker room. Yeah. So, so last awesome. question for you. We got senior night coming up Thursday. Since I'm talking to you tonight, uh, I'll, I'll hit a different senior on Thursday, right? Yes, sir. And, and half that's because I promised Joe Alex <laughs> that if I interviewed you on senior night, <laughs> uh-huh. that he could join. Oh, no. So no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, no. no. <laughs> so, so we'll get a different senior <laughs> yeah. for senior night. <laughs> So, um, tell us about the upcoming senior class. You know what? You, you know we, we're losing some some key pieces going out. What do we have coming in? What do we have the seniors coming up as far as leadership and and how that can look next year? I think uh, next year our captains are going to be great captains. I mean, they learned a lot from the past years because you got to realize the the captains that are going to be the captains next year. They started when they were freshmen, so they had to deal 
with everything. So they, they've been through the rough. They've been through the good. And we're just learning from each other. And I think next year they're going to be good. We got Boomer, Braden, Micah. They're gonna, it's going to be a, all sorts of trades with people. I think it's going to be good next year. Okay. That's awesome. Sweet. So we're, we're looking for good this year. So winning out, getting into the playoffs, right? Yep. Let's do it. Uh, you you got to bring the energy with the team tonight. So that's what right? we're going to do. Talk them up. Go give them a pep talk. Uh, tell them all of OSN wants to see them on the W tonight and on the W Thursday night. Yes, sir. So get some energy. Good luck tonight. Good luck tonight, yes, man. Sir, thank Looking you forward to some it. great ball. Thank you all. Hey, what's going on? I switched to H&R Block this year and had one of their experts do my taxes for me. Kind of a big win. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're so on top of it. They guaranteed my taxes were 100% accurate. And my maximum refund or I get my money back. Wow, nice. I don't even know if my guy's got any guarantees. You should definitely switch it up. We're going to go do a victory lap now. Get a 100% accurate return and your max refund or your money back. It's better with... Aw, oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. Waste is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solutions. Call or click today. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A better design, flowers and gifts is under new ownership, and we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. All right. We are back with the Oklahoma Sports Network, brought to you by the Lot Marketing Group. Your second half is going to be brought to you by H&R Block here at Choctaw Middle School Stadium. We're going to start the second half off with the Lady Yellow Jackets leading 2-1 to one over the Lady Highlanders. Just heard a little bit from Pasquale Arredondo, and you know, he kind of pulled from what we were talking about with the ladies about just having that energy and you know coming out, coming out ready to play. Yeah, uh, he did. You know, I, I got to say, I was I was really impressed with Pasquale. I thought his um, you can just see the maturity uh, that he's yeah. that he's gone through over the years, as, as you should. But I just it doesn't always happen, it doesn't uh, always you know, happen. And, and certainly not on the pace that you'd like it to. But I just I'd like to uh, applaud Pasquale. I think uh, you just saw great. He demonstrated great leadership today up here in the booth in that interview and I think he, he probably has throughout the season as well based off of what we've seen on the field and how that team has uh, has really just gelled and, and and one one thing I always point out is those characteristics are th those aren't coached characteristics you know what I'm saying now having that leadership and the maturity that's that's parenting you know this 
Crystal and Joe Alex and Mike, they're they're great, you know. And if you don't have the right home home life, ball shot by Lily from distance. But if you don't have that that home home training, <laughs> you know, yeah, basically, you don't get a kid like that. No, I think that's right. I mean, you, it's it's home training literally, and it's uh, you know just um, maybe a. a a mentor of somebody along the line as well. I mean, the, where you can pick those things up. And then some people are just, are just um, you know, they just find it in their journey. So however he's come across it, he's obviously got a great family support system around yeah. him. And um, it's just, it's great to see the maturity and uh, hear him talking about positive things and a positive outlook and uh, the brotherhood that they've really found as a, as a team. I was just uh, I was impressed with Pasquale. Hats off to him, and man, I hope they go out there and 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 go earn him a win tonight. Yeah. Good ball in. Goodness. Ball cleared out by the Lady Highlanders after a little bit of a scrum, a little rugby scrum down there. It's great hustle by Deanne to get in there and put some pressure on that. Dowdy with the clearance again. Well done by number 13, just to know that she was about a half yard onside to receive that ball. Out for a Lady Highlanders goal kick. So prior to the ladies match, we had the JV boys match. Ended in a 2-1 to one score. With the Highlanders on the wrong side, but not a terrible match either. So we're told you might have better info now, but Aspen took a, a little hit to the a little knock to the head. Yeah, I missed it during the game. I, um, I did too. But she um, apparently did, and. She was evaluated, and I just I just got a text a moment ago that was saying that Marcus made the call that he wanted her to sit. So, um, you know, I, and I appreciate them looking out for her. And yeah, better safe than sorry. Honestly, when it comes to the head, you you only get one of them. Yeah, and if you mess it up, it's kind of critical. Literally, what I tell her. <laughs> oh, good. Great job by Elena to get that ball over to. Mason. Would have liked to have seen Mason just carry it out wide, though. She had plenty of space out yeah. there, just off to the to the corner, basically. So due to the Aspen injury, we have Nat playing right back with Kaylee Moody playing center back, and then Lily Smith pushed up into the defensive midfield position, which – like that adjustment a lot. Lily is a great fit as a defensive midfielder. Haven't seen Nat play defense at all, so don't – I don't think it'd be a bad idea if the coaches did it. So, trust on the coaches' decision there. You know, I you know we'll we'll see, but I think it's um it's a great place. Um, I just I feel like she'd be a great fit for it. Really, she's, so we'll she seems see. like a smart player, which a smart player can usually kind of get get away with any position on the field. Right. Mosby putting the pressure on. She got to pressure the goalkeeper and make that ball come out. Are they playing with two defensive midfielders, maybe? Barley and Lily? I think no would be my guess. Barley just tends to play pretty deep in her attacking position. That ball is through. Oh, Taylor's going to come Taylor. off. Great job by Taylor to get to that one. That was really good. At least she, slow the attack. She didn't hesitate. She came out, took decisive Dowdy action. With, Dowdy with all kinds of space in front of her. I want to see Mosby making a diagonal run there. Would have been great for, for, Le, or for Avery to kind of put that ball up over to her. Or even Avery could have carried it a bit more. You know, there yeah. was, there she was had, space. She had all kinds of green. I think the lady that the, the PA announcer slash coach's wife is my hero right now, <laughs> kicking that AC on. Turning the AC on. Not mad about that it's at all. It's starting to get warm up in here.
Pretty decent crowd out here from Choctaw. Not too rowdy. Good number of folks. Yep. Lily's going to put a hit on that one. Or she, oh, she's trying to play it in. Not bad. Dan with good sportsmanship to kind of make sure she doesn't run over the goalkeeper. That was a big ball out. Yes, it was. He needs to drop that to Taylor. That was a mistake for sure. Great job by Taylor to save the day for the Lady Highlanders. Avery made the challenge, could not quite come up with the ball. Mason just misplayed that one off her shoulder. That's another change we had. Mason Cortez coming in to start the second half. Since Natalie moved back to the defensive side of the ball. Phillips on the hustle. Good hustle by Mason, Great too. Good job by Mason to get back to keep that one from going out of touch. Big throw. They got a couple of. Yes, they do. Of big throwers. <laughs> you got a throw like that, it's basically like having a corner kick. It's crazy. Big advantage. That I know of, the Lady Highlanders only have one that'll come close to that. And Aspen, Aspen has a pretty big throw. At least she did last year. She did. She hasn't. She hasn't. I don't think she's thrown it in once this year, just because of the positions she's been playing. But man, that ball is in. Wow, that was a off good finish. Off the corner kick, great finish off the corner kick. Header in. That was awesome. Lady Highlanders now down three to one. Three to one now for the Lady Yellow Jackets over the Lady Highlanders. It's do or die time. So honestly. Deanne take off here, and Mason could just crush it across the. Yeah. Honestly, this is this is it, Lady Highlanders. If they don't do something within the next five seven minutes, I th I think that's really going to hurt their chances in this match. Yeah. You want to see them come away with with something here. 0-5 oh, in district play. Shocking, really. Absolutely. After being number three in the district last year. Losing some absolutely winnable matches. Natalie with the great defensive play there to slow the attack. Dowdy backing her up. Phillips there to I really love to see Natalie that cross. hustling back there to get into the fight instead yeah. of and she's new at that position. But you you get beat, you got to get you, you got to get, get back, back like all all urgency. And that's with not having that. Not having that experience at that position with that back line, knowing that Avery's going to come challenge and she needs to get back central. As Avery comes out wide to challenge, she needs to get back central and not not having that right continuity. But even if you don't know that, you just know that in simple terms, I get come back. out on the attack, 
I get beat. Now the ball's behind me. I've got to hustle back, not just trot yeah. back and get back to it. And again, new to the position and just learning. Or just out of fight. Yeah, I'm sure that's I don't, real I don't too. know. We're not down on the field to really get a good gauge of the ladies' attitude or whatever at this point, but some of them are playing like they're just out of fight. Yep. That ball goes in. Layla Mosby's going to get on her horses here. Ball played out of bounds by the Lady Yellow Jackets goalkeeper. Phillips going to come up and make the throw in. Great job by Mason to work there to win that ball for the Lady Highlanders. Miscommunication between Lily and Nat. Works out. Ooh, he tries to get there before the goalkeeper. Great play by the Lady Yellow Jackets goalkeeper. Love Lily's work ethic and just what she's doing out there and holding. I think she's she's Looks she's like working it right now. Riley Lone. She's also got her hands on her hips. You can tell she's feeling it. Midfield's a whole yeah. lot different than back line. Um, it'll wear your butt out, that's for sure. Yeah, but I've noticed, like, through the years, I've seen Lily do the hands on the hips, I'm tired thing, and then make some incredible run. 100%, <laughs> yes. No doubt. Like, there isn't, there isn't an E on that tank. No, she doesn't quit. Headed out by Layla Phillips. Lady Yellow Jackets getting the throw. Lady Yellow Jackets content to take the time to go <laughs> get the ball. I would be too. So if you look across across the field uh, throughout the Lady Highlanders team, it's like I I get a lot from body posture, body positioning. Gosh. There's a lot of defeated posture. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, Rich, there is. And, I mean, honestly – and they've had a rough season. They've had a rough, rough season. And I'm not saying they should they should give up because you shouldn't. You should never give up. But it's just I think it's a it's a pretty predictable place to to be. Yeah. Um with I I think you just there's no other way to describe it than just a disappointing season. They yeah. They didn't none of them anticipated their season going this way. Um they they had big hopes for this year. Definitely, and, and I don't think foolishly by any means. I, no, they, they have the talent and the potential. That's just they've they've just definitely underperformed. Um, There's been some kind of disconnect, I think, between between last year and this year. Some kind of disconnect. We've had some key injuries as well that have been super hurtful, uh, yeah. you know, or, or difficult for the team. But I think even with what with what wasn't on injured reserve, with everything that everything else that you had, everybody else, this this is still a, a wild disappointment of a season for what 
yeah. these ladies expect of themselves, and uh, I think everybody in and around this program expects. And I think uh, even throughout the district, it was probably a big surprise. Oh, no doubt. I know if, we got some of the Elgin ladies that referee with us out at the Lawton Soccer Club, and you know, a couple of them have even said, "Like, what's up with the what's up with the Highlanders? This yeah, year? what's up with Mac?" So I think it's like a, a district wide, like okay, where, where'd MacArthur go this year? And I think it's a fair question. You know, you you've got to after going to the playoffs last year, and really, I think in a lot of respects, having a maybe a a better and deeper team this season than you did last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Goodness. Point of all that is where I, where I was going was. You know, you find yourself down 3-1 on the heels of uh, coming in here with the season that you've had. And um, it's, man, you could just see how it would quickly mentally just fall apart for you. Yeah. Again, a lot of value in not letting it fall apart, a lot of value in fighting through it. Big foul called. And it's not like they've given up out there. They're playing, they're fighting. Yeah, uh, certainly some of these girls are are definitely giving it, uh, giving it what they've got, or giving it a good amount anyway. And um, it just I think as a as a team as a whole, you can just see the energy and the. It's just, it's flat. Yeah. Kind of emotionless. <laughs> Big free kick handled by Taylor. Notice they had three runners right there ready to put it in the net if Taylor didn't scoop that up. Yes, sir. Um, no. No Highlanders defenders got back with him. Hopefully they were offside, though. <laughs> Had it went the whole way through. Throw an opportunity, giving up. Another good play by Lily to win to the ball. Yeah, Just looking up, finding, looking for someone. Good ball. Finds Mosby. Tries to find Mosby. Put it in. Put There's it in. A big put it in. Shot there needed to be taken. Oh. a little bit quicker by. Yeah, that needed to be Mason. a one touch. Mason or Elena out there should have just hammered that ball towards goal. One of a few mistakes by the Lady Yellow Jackets goalkeeper today. Foul called. Lady Highlander's going to have a kick. I think as a coaching staff, you know, for uh, for the Highlanders, what one of the big things I'm looking for right now and going into in, in the off season and looking forward to next season is we you, we've we've got to find a way to to get offensive production, um, and that takes you either have to have some really well practiced technique at the top, uh, some teamwork, or you've got to have a, a couple of people who are just they're they're hungry for the net they want to go score they're driven yeah. they're just about it it's all they care about and they'll sell out to do it all the time and give you everything they've got all the time and i think we've just we've really lacked that this season uh i think you've got people on the field or on this team that that could bring you that we've got some people obviously on injured reserve um that bring that i think Obviously, Michaela is a is a big part of that, and that's how she plays. Yeah. Um, there is a young lady named Maddie, I believe, and that's all I know about her. You may know her, but I don't know her, but I've heard. I got to see her. Um, she played believe, in a couple matches. I believe she's been out injured, maybe since uh, the round robin at MacArthur or out at uh, out at Big Green. Yeah. Um, but that was the first time I ever saw her play, and, man, she really stood out to me as kind of that same type of aggressive mentality. She just she would not be stopped. Um, are you sure as heck we're going to have to stop her to, to stop her? You know, she wasn't – she's not going to just give up on a play. Yep. Um, she was very impressive. I was super excited to see her play this season, and, again, apparently she got – Injured with an injury, a season-ending injury, uh, which is her and Nalia in the midfield, and Nalia was a massive loss. Yeah, well, we got Ella Isaacson on the ball now, substituted in for Layla Mosby. 
She came off to the wing, and Deanne moved to the center forward position. But uh, my biggest thing would be as a coach, like, maybe taking advantage of the off season and some kind of, whether it be you know, like a 3v3 or something of that nature, to do stuff, to get to know the girls better, to learn how to pull their full potential out of them. Offside. You know, just just to learn what it takes to pull the full potential out of these ladies. You know, and that just comes from getting to know the ladies a little bit better. And, you know, that's something Bailey could do, you know, and start understanding them at the next level. Yeah. But exciting to see Ella, Ella Isaacson out here, a right winger. Yes, it is. I know our folks back home are super excited to see her playing. And Heck, yeah. Nice work by Lily again. Go, go. Lily almost drew that foul there. Ella was making a run. She ran out of real estate. Would like to see Lily send that through. She had she had Ella doing what she should do, which is making that run, anticipating the pass. She yeah, seemed just to just send it down into the corner and let, let Ella go run after it. Ran out of legal real estate. Yes, she did. Legal real estate is right. Good work through the midfield for the Lady Yellow Jackets. Good job by Kaylee Moody to put a stop to Yes, it was. Elena Burke on the ball. Oh. Ooh, tried to make a move around the center back there. So Mosby didn't come off the field. Mosby went to left back, and Phillips came off the field. I think you can see them getting frustrated out there. You know, we, we work the ball up from the back through the middle, and we just we don't know how to convert at the top. Yeah. That and there's been some great defensive play by the late Lady Yellow Jackets also. You know, like that time up there. No doubt, no doubt. Eight times out of ten, I'm taking Elena on the win there. You know, 1v1 against that girl. But Good look for Lily trying to pick out Deanne on the far side. Oh. oh, yeah. She's going to call that outside the box. That was it. She was so in the box. Once again, they're going to place the ball <laughs> On literally the inside the box. Right. So Rich, Rich, our rules expert, is telling us that this actually should be a PK based off where they placed it. We're thankful that it's not, but um, the ball's sitting on the line, which means it is technically in the box. It's actually sitting inside the box. Ball comes <laughs> off of the football crossbar. Hit it! Uh, it it's, offsides. It was off of the football crossbar. Oh, uh, was it really? Yeah. It was off the yellow bar. Not the white one. We all got Sorry. A little excitement in the booth here. <laughs> I was confused too. It looked like a live ball, and everyone was just walking away. And I'm like, man, somebody get on it. <laughs> somebody do something. So, right. <laughs> Avery looks a little worse for wear. She took a ball to the gut or the chest or something and yeah it seemed to hurt whatever wherever it hit her look she's holding the stomach so i guess it's the gut close range powerful boot like that can hurt they they do Good. Oh. ball off lily's hand
This is dangerous. Thankfully, right to Taylor, and she handles her business. Taylor's having a pretty good game tonight. Not definitely not a game to be disappointed about for her. Oof. Sorry for silence, ladies and gentlemen. Just kind of over oh, here. Oh, good shot. Clicky by clicking Mason. away. Mason good, on a shot. Good chance. She got a hold of that. Nobody there to make the keeper uncomfortable, but. So we're down to about 12 and a half minutes left in the match. Lady Yellow Jackets up 3-1 over to MacArthur Highlanders in this H&R Block second half. Their title sponsor, the Lawton Marketing Group. Lady Highlanders is trying to fight their way out of this one. Oh, my gosh. A little miscommunication. Taylor should have been scooping that one up. Kaylee was on the great block by Avery. Yes, it was. Isaacson plays it up. There wasn't really anyone there to retrieve it. The ball played off the hand to number 10. A no call. Elena Burke has her pocket picked. <laughs> that was a really nice defensive play. It was. Got Nora Diala in for Nat. Back here is a right back. Young freshman who has shown some flashes of, of great play throughout the season at times. You know, I miss Lily coming out, but I think you can feel. I didn't realize she came out either. You can feel the difference with, without her out there. With Barley shifted into the defensive midfield role. I wonder why she came out. So Nat went to left wing. Mason got moved into the middle as an attacking midfielder. Which I think is a role that Mason can play well. Actually, yeah, I agree. I like her there. She, she's And she's demonstrated the skill set tonight that I think makes her so valuable there, which is so just her, her touch passes, her yeah. through balls. She her sees, touch, her I think vision. she sees the attack well. Yeah. Um, I don't where, – where she can see it developing and she can – or even help develop it by sending the ball through at yeah. an angle. and 100%, dude. I, I just – for me, it's more of like – if we want these players to really perfect their craft, we got to make them do their craft. You know, if if if, if she's going to be your answer as an attacking midfielder, player as an attacking yeah. midfielder. There is a you lot know, of kind of all around. There's a lot of players that get bounced all around the field, which kudos to them if they can handle playing that. But in order to really establish the continuity throughout the team, you, 
like there's got to be a baseline both as an individual in your in that given position and then and and then more broadly as a team yeah when you can play especially with your starting 11 a, a lot of minutes and with those people all in the same position uh, and then even when you do sub somebody out you're 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 pulling a piece off and putting a piece in back into that same spot the rest of the unit is still playing in their given spots it does make a massive difference yeah and i and, and like we've said, we commend the coaches for trying to make changes that will make a difference. 100%. You know, and I think maybe that's a big part of what's been at play is that they – you just – with the injuries that we've gotten, you're yeah. you're, you're trying to – Trying to figure out the answer. Resolve the riddle, you know. Or at this point, you might just be looking, okay, who's better where for next year? Yeah. Especially at this point in the game, um, this point in the season. Because I'm pretty sure they've already kind of scouted out what they have coming up from the middle school and know what they have coming in. They're they're losing Kaylee Moody and Taylor Dominguez as seniors, and that is it. It's got to be like the smallest senior class. Uh, of soccer like, players like, that like, like ever <laughs> yeah it's amazing i mean you hate to lose those two but just for you to only lose two two players is is a big deal and she was about three miles offside yeah do you gonna put up some fight here or not Push the ball through for herself. Going to put the pressure on the goalkeeper. Junior goalkeeper for the Lady Yellow Jackets has played a heck of a match. It's a, it's a little hard. Like It's hard to get the goals whenever you, you struggle creating offense. But it makes it even harder when there's there's not mistakes to capitalize on by the opposing goalkeeper. Yep. Totally right. The center backs have played quite well tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Ball goes out for a Lady Highlanders throw. So Lily came back in, I think, uh, Natalie, if I'm right. Looks like Natty, Natalie's taking a break. Okay. Or Nat, however Nat, we want to. Yep. She came out and Lily came in. Call for the Lady Highlanders. Dangerous spot here. You know, Elena has the, the foot for it. She has the foot to put it on frame, or she has the touch to make a good service in. But without without the without a Lady Yellow Jacket coming up on that ball really quick, I would have loved to see her just take a shot early. Oh, good ball. Dang it. Oh, that bounce is just high for Layla Mosby on the backside. That was a great service in, man. It that was. was really good. A potentially dangerous ball. Layla Mosby is a point guard on the basketball court. She is not tall. <laughs> <laughs> that ball was probably about six inches over her head. Thank you. At least send the ball towards goal. That's yeah. Just it was just a bad touch, but it was yeah, the right idea for sure. The end. Trying to put a little exclamation point on it. <laughs> so as we wind this down, our overall summary of the Lady Highlanders match tonight, I'd, 
I'd say fairly disappointing in the fact that you can't create any offense. And, and that's what it boils down to. We're we having trouble creating offense. And I don't know whether to put that on the midfield or on the forwards or what. What do you think, Kobe? I think uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and some wing some wing play too. Um honestly. I being I think, able to connect. I think that un those three units don't they just they don't know how to connect and what to do. Midfield's got the ball and I feel like um it's like everybody kinda waits for something to happen. It's like Wingers they know what got to the do. ball. They know what to do individually. Right. Exactly. But they don't know what to do for their teammates. For their other one, right? Yeah. I'm the winger. I've got the ball. What do I do to to help set up uh, an attacking mid or my striker for for a, a potential scoring opportunity? That's just – was a good look by Lily. She was wise to take that. It was just well defended. Yeah. Great job closing out on the shooter there. So, yeah, man, for me, I don't know what you think, but for me it's, it's really all three. Yeah, it's just – it's a, to me, it's just a, a disappointment overall, you know, to not be able to create offense with the weapons that we have, that we know we have. It's a big ball through for Lily and Mason to run on to. Great ball. I think it was Elena that played the ball up. I think it was, and it was just really selfless play by Mason. To She didn't have the right body position to play that ball. Yeah. So she just let it go to her teammate Lily, and uh, Lily did have a much better position to play it and, and did. So it was cool to see. Taylor off her line to play that one. Thank goodness for a for a good hard bounce off the attacking leg of number fourteen, Lily Donaldson, the Lady Yellow Jacket Lily. Yeah, that was a close call. So glad it was a good hard bounce off her leg and mm -hmm. went over to crossbars. We've got a minute and eighteen left. Ish. Looks like the Lady Highlander just kind of going through the motions to let the clock run out and hopefully make a make a show for Thursday night. Yeah. Big rival game. Uh, so hopefully they'll be up for that one and ready to go. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of familiarity with the Elgin Owls. Mm -hmm. A lot of girls play club ball together, have played club ball together with it being another lot in soccer club school. Good call by the referee there. Just over 20 seconds left in the match, though. Not really going to make a, a difference. Another good call by the referee. Just a really late challenge by Deanne. That looked like a frustration challenge. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're going to get three whistles here, and that's going to be the end of the match with the Lady Yellow Jackets three and the Lady Highlanders one. Another disappointing match for the Lady Highlanders. Kobe, your take? Uh, disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely sums it up. Uninspired for the most part, I would say. Yeah. And they came out with a little bit of something and, and fought for a while, but uh, not with the level of intensity you'd really like to see. And, again, we're talking about the team as a whole. I think there are a, a few bright points and exceptions, uh, especially earlier in the game when there yeah. was when the game was still in question. 
but as it as it drug on and 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 it, it was obvious that this was going to be an L. Um, yeah, yeah. I just I think you hit the hit the nail on the head. Intensity, but so the lack of energy and lack of intensity it kind of made it a very disappointing evening for the Lady Highlanders. So. This is Rich Frederick and Kobe Edwards. Got John Burke on the camera with Oklahoma Sports Network. We will be back at you for the men's match here shortly. We're going to take us a little break. Hey, what's going on? I switched to H&R Block this year and had one of their experts do my taxes for me. Kind of a big win. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're so on top of it. They guaranteed my taxes were 100% accurate. And my maximum refund, or I get my money back. Wow, nice. I don't even know if my guy's got any guarantees. You should definitely switch it up. We're going to go do a victory lap now. Get a 100% accurate return and your max refund, or your money back. It's better with... Aw, oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home, or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. Waste is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solutions. Call or click today. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A Better Design Flowers and Gifts is under new ownership, and we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. At Miller Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we offer preventive maintenance agreements, summer tune-ups, and service calls. During the summer when your air conditioner breaks, you have to give us a call. We'll with preventive maintenance agreements that prevents that. We go out, service the air conditioners, and prep them so they don't fail on you in the peak time of the year. The U.S. Department of Energy states that you can save up to 30% of your utility bill by having your system properly maintenanced. real 
real red wine vinegar and olive oil blend. It's called the juice. And at Jersey Mike's, it adds that jazz to your sub. Add a flavor zing with the juice. Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Lawton's newest hangout. 5370 Northwest Cash Road. A family-friendly atmosphere featuring their award-winning pizza and calzone. Made fresh daily from their secret family recipe. With handcrafted burgers, wings, appetizers, salad, and homemade desserts, including deep-fried banana pudding. Come hang out with us. The Hangout, 5370 Northwest Cash Road in Lawton. Scooter's Coffee, world-class coffee rooted in quality, with two locations to serve you in Lawton and Elgin. Wake up to the amazing aroma of quality, from their hot and ice drinks to blenders, smoothies, teas, to even their great food delights. Or why not try their at-home coffees or coffee on the go? Locally owned and operated, Scooter's in Lawton and Elgin. Scooter's, rooted in quality. At Whitehead Plumbing, our mission is to be a leading full-service plumbing contractor. We have dedicated over 20 years perfecting our expertise in Southwest Oklahoma with our craftsmanship and customer service. Whether you have a water, sewer, or gas line that needs to be replaced or repaired, you can always count on us to be there. We offer free estimates and have 24-7 emergency services available. We'll work around the clock and are committed to providing our customers with impeccable services. Call Whitehead Plumbing today for all your plumbing needs. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home, or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A Better Design Flowers and Gifts is under new ownership, and we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Here at Classic Lot and Chevrolet, we love our community and we want to show our appreciation. We offer savings for military, first responders, college students, and educators. Giving back to those who give everything they've got. What's, What's in, in your, your driveway? driveway? You don't have to come onto the lot, we'll bring it to you. Get a 360 degree view and video summary of every vehicle. Top dollar for your trade and even get pre-approved. ClassicChevyNation.com. What's, What's in, in your, your driveway? driveway? Enjoy the day. 
At Miller Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we offer preventive maintenance agreements, summer tune-ups, and service calls. During the summer when your air conditioner breaks, you have to give us a call. We'll with preventive maintenance agreements that prevents that. We go out, service the air conditioners, and prep them so they don't fail on you in the peak time of the year. The U.S. Department of Energy states that you can save up to 30% of your utility bill by having your system properly maintenanced. Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1955. Waste is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solutions. Call or click today. Aw, oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a Pay Me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free Pay Me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solutions. Call or click today. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Sidelined by surgery, illness, injury? Valor Physical Therapy can help. At Valor PT, our skilled therapists create a rehabilitation program individualized for you with education and encouragement each step of the way. Whether it's sports or the activities of life, let Valor get you back in the game. Start now at 405-265-6449. No referral needed. Mention Oklahoma Sports Network and get a free t-shirt at your first appointment. Belongs 
to us. I'm flying, I put my helmet on, my visor down, my mask up. You don't know who I am, but I'm African American, Asian American, Hispanic, white, male or female. You just know I'm an American airman, kicking your butt. I'm General C.Q. Brown Jr. Come join us. At Whitehead Plumbing, our mission is to be a leading full-service plumbing contractor. We have dedicated over 20 years perfecting our expertise in Southwest Oklahoma with our craftsmanship and customer service. Whether you have a water, sewer, or gas line that needs to be replaced or repaired, you can always count on us to be there. We offer free estimates and have 24-7 emergency services available. We'll work around the clock and are committed to providing our customers with impeccable services. Call Whitehead Plumbing today for all your plumbing needs. All right, Rich Frederick back here joining you solo for the moment. Kobe's taking a break. I'm going to get the boys introduced here. Looking for a great matchup tonight between the Yellow Jackets and the Highlanders. So, Rich Frederick once again with you. Oklahoma Sports Network brought to you by Lawton Marketing Group. Your first half is brought to you by Lawton Bail Bonds. As they announce the starting lineup here. Number three, Blake Reed. Number five, Talon Shimp. Number six, Jesus Torres. Number uh, eight, Sawyer Zoodle. Number 10, Ty Thompson. Number 11, Jackson Hughes. Number 12, Connor Quick. Number 13, Philippe Velasco. And number 21, Braden McClure. Head coach Eric Jenkins, assistant coaches Teddy Fort and Mar Mario Godinez. Islanders look pumped and ready to go here tonight. Heard from Pasquale earlier talking about just the, the intensity and the energy they need to bring tonight and Thursday night to go ahead and try and make a run into the playoffs. A couple lineup changes tonight because of yellow card problems. We're going to move Wayne up to the center forward position. Looks like Kale Kinder is going to start as an attacking midfielder where Wayne usually is. And the rest of it is the, oh, it, and uh, we got Jason Shaw starting as left back. And the rest of it is, is your usual suspects. Caleb and Boomer is the center backs. Ty on the right back. Our man in a match last Thursday, Miguel Martinez, number five, as a defensive back. Pasquale joins Kale as an attacking midfield. And your wingers, Romeo and Brayton. Referee's ready to get this one kicked off here. All right, we're whistled in. Highlanders trying to put pressure on early and fast. Pasquale said he wants, to, wants the Highlanders to get a good fast start here tonight. Ball goes out for a Highlanders throw. That, and that comes from pressure, 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 pressure on that defensive line when they have the ball at their feet. Boomer Nick's going to come up, try to turn the throw in into a corner kick. Ball's long. Off of a Choctaw head. 
Not quite in the goal, though. Jason Shaw was pushed forward for the corner kick. He's going to look to get on the hustle to get back. Miguel Martinez slows that attack beautifully. That was a great job. Great job slowing and then stopping that attack. Pasquale on the ball. He's looking for a runner. Ball's played a little bit behind Ty. Pasquale's teammates telling him to take it. Looking for an early shot there. From distance. One of those shots that wakes up the goalkeeper a little bit for us. And if it doesn't go in the back of the net, it kind of kind of puts them on, on edge. Once again, high pressure by Braden and Wayne. Out for a Highlander throw. Kinder calm, cool, and collect on the ball. As you would not expect from a freshman who's getting his first varsity start, but definitely doing well. That young man had a whole fist full of jersey on Wayne there, but saved by the post there for the Highlanders. Post can be your best friend as a goalkeeper. Not quite the the run that the Highlanders wanted to give up to start off the match there, but we have had a couple of opportunities ourselves. It's going to be a free kick for the Yellow Jackets from about almost 40 yards out. Frank easily creams that. Looks like he's looking for the big ball out. Good defense by Ty and Kale combining there. Two freshmen. Ball quickly comes out from Frank to Pasquale looking for a counterattack. Kale plays the 1-2, or tried to play the 1-2 with Pasquale. Romeo ends up on the ball. Frank calm on the ball. Plays out to Pasquale just a little bit over his head. Judging the, the strength to play that on those long balls is difficult. Tie with the ball. Braden make the run up the sideline. A little miscommunication between Romeo and Braden over there on what was going to happen with that ball once it hit Romeo's feet. Big turnover by the Yellow Jackets in midfield. Braden on the ball with the shot from distance. Gives the goalkeeper some problems, but nobody crashing in. That's the, the things that happen when you don't have someone crashing that goalkeeper on a shot like that. It could give him problems. Wayne beats his man, looks at the far post, just goes a little bit wide. Ball went out for a goal kick for the Yellow Jackets. High pressure by Wayne. Wayne filling in as that center forward role pretty well tonight. Kobe joins back up with us. Pasquale tries to draw the foul there, does not get the call. 
I don't know how you don't get that call, but. He's not happy about it. No, absolutely not. But they can't let that get to their head. We <coughs> already told him to shush. Yep. Brayden tries to make a turn around the defender. Beats two. Oh. Get the little, a couple little ticky tacks against the Highlanders here. And then a couple big, pretty hard hits that aren't called for the Highlanders. So what's your take on the game so far, Rich? I've, I got to catch some of it. Uh, so I run down to the concession stand. but Highlanders gave up one huge run back here that got saved by the post. Wow. But other than that, they've, they've pretty much been in control. A lot of miscommunications. Okay. But that will happen, especially on your front line, when you take someone who's usually in the midfield and put them as a center forward and you insert a freshman to play – that center midfield spot. There's a big run by Ty Tate. Oof. That dude got some jets. By the way, it is Ty's 16th birthday today. So Happy birthday, Ty. Big shout out to Ty and his family. That ball was just a little bit long for even the speedy Ty. Goes out for a goal kick. So from what I got to see, which was not everything, it seemed like we're pretty much maintaining the ball or keeping the ball on on our attacking half of the field. Is that for the most for part? The most we, part? Just, we just got to get rid of these counter attacks, which there's only really one that did some damage or potentially caused some damage. And then we're, we're not crashing the goal when. Mm -hmm. Like Braden, Braden ripped that shot. Mm -hmm. The goalkeeper struggled to handle mm -hmm. it and went to the ground. I saw that one. But we didn't have anyone there to crash to clean it up. Pasquale is found in the middle of the field by himself. Balls oh. come, comes up to Wayne. Wayne tries to put it through. Pasquale definitely seems to be putting things on his shoulders tonight. Yeah, he seems dialed in and ready to go. It's just a follow-up or a continuation of uh, his talk to us during halftime of the ladies' match. Yeah, he – yeah. Focused and, and into it focused, for sure, yes. yeah. Braden on the wing. Nice Turns it in, has the shot. Oh, it goes in 1-0 for the Highlanders off the foot of Braden Frederick. That was a sweet move on that cut in, and then what a beautiful finish. Man. And we had a talk earlier, him and I. So are you claiming credit for that? I am not you, claiming you, credit you for that. You gave him the proper motivation? Is that what it was? I am not claiming credit for okay, that. Okay, I didn't know where you were going. Go ahead. Finish but, your story, Rich. I didn't mean to interrupt you. But I told him, I was like, <laughs> I was like, look, you know, you have your opportunity tonight where, you know, basically the top forward's out. Yeah. And you have an opportunity to, to step up and be that guy. Yep. You know, the senior's out, the junior's in. Yeah. And and he said, don't worry, Dad, I got you. That's awesome. And I got you. I guess, I, I guess that means I'm going to go ahead and uh -huh. score the first goal of the match. Well, he sure did. That was his second rocketed shot, though, tonight. The first shot was on a rope, too, that keeper struggled to handle down there. No, you're absolutely right. You know, anytime you're you're going to get more play time because of whatever the circumstances are, um, out for cards, out for grades, out for injury, sickness, whatever, um, man, that's a massive opportunity, and you should absolutely see it that way. Man, Pasquale yeah, is just fighting through everything over there. I'll be honest. I think between Pasquale and Braden right now, because Braden's made some great plays while while on the ball with the ball at his feet. Yep. Um. This could be could be tough to handle for the Choctaw Yellow Jackets. If both of those two are on their game, I mm -hmm. mean, playing at that high of a level with that level of amount with that amount of focus, and we got a call against the Highlanders for the Highlanders being pushed in the back. All right, 
Once again, Pasquale was very confused. <laughs> Pasquale showed his confusion to the referee and was told probably in the kindest way possible to be quiet. Yeah, get out of my face. Huge tackle from behind. Kale drug down from behind. But like I was saying, though, it, when you get Braden and Pasquale both dialed in mm -hmm. the way they are right now, mm -hmm. it's hard to handle. And and then, you know, you got the pieces around. Like, you got Romeo, you got Kale Kinder, you got Miguel and Wayne, you know, which they're, they're top-tier athletes, too, you know? Yep. Nice. Good work between Braden and Kale Kinder right there. Just giving them fits right now. Hit it. Pasquale has a hit from distance. I want to see Romeo a little quicker on that contention there with the keeper on the shots. But all in all, we're getting the shots. Good to see the future out here tonight. You know, you got Kale Kinder up there in the, as an attacking midfielder. We've seen, seen Grant Holland earlier in the season fill in that role also. To know that we have two guys that can come fill that role because we, we lose an attacking midfielder after this year. Yeah, you know, and I've only been up here for just a few minutes now, but already, I mean, Kale is, is I think, is really having a good game and has done some good things. And You see his team trust him? Valuable minutes too to just to grow your depth and get more experience and game time experience jason shaw having a good, decent game back here as a left back also a sophomore another position we lose next year with brylin brighton take a hit Oh God! Tried to play that one over to Pasquale. Just too much of on it. That was Pasquale. It was, it was a good idea. If he lays that out in front of Pasquale, well, that's a deadly shot coming Absolutely. at the goal. Oh yeah, it is. Um, he just he just mishandled the pass. Yep. But looks good like thinking. they switched. They switched Braden and Romeo. Switched their sides. Either that's a matchup thing or. Yeah, I don't know. I like the way it was, wins. to be honest with you. So maybe maybe this will be even better. Let's hope so. Well, Braden's been trying to get onto that left foot from the right side, and, you know, they've been giving him fits, him trying to do that. So maybe they want him to take that quicker shot from the left side with the left foot. Because we know that's his more dominant. Oh, gosh. Oh. Just missed on that challenge. Pasquale lays it out nicely for Kale Kinder. Kale Kinder plays it to Romeo. Romeo had options. Yep. Just held the ball way too long in a static position. Would love to see him put a shot on that or lay it off to Braden, lay it off to Pasquale a little earlier when they had a shot or Wayne. Yeah, Wayne was begging for it. Yeah. Well done by Kale there. Pasquale looking for the one-two, but the pass not quite as accurate as it needed to be for that from Braden. Boomer getting well forward from his center back position there. Like he's in search of something, too. Highlanders look 
looking solid in possession right they now. They are. Like it's just clicking. I love the freedom that Boomer had there. I don't know, you know, I just you called Boomer out there just coming up and getting involved in the attack and Manny just I love the freedom that he clearly felt just to linger up there and try to see something develop to yeah, to nice. allow numbers to be pushed up and just see um, and then without being called back, he was like, all right, man, plays moved away from me. It's time for me to get back to my yeah, spot. That shows, that shows a lot of a lot of trust in your defensive midfielder, mm-hmm. the sophomore Miguel Martinez. Yep. Braden Romeo switching back. I'm, I'm pretty sure they do that at will. That's okay. Not a, that's not a coaching call. That is a call made on the field. Between some guys that just they're, they're experienced at a high level in club ball and can make that call. Good job Good by work. Shaw. Jason Shaw putting in the work to slow that attack, let his team get numbers behind the ball. Oh, man. Got Elena Burke out in front of us cheering on Jason Shaw over there. <laughs> can hear her. go Jason good Jason don't stab don't stab she got his back oh and that call goes against Braden when he's tripped into the player <laughs> Pasquale's confused once again like what is going on Substitution is coming for both teams right now. It's like Dominic coming in for Braden, Micah coming in for Romeo. I think Braden and Romeo were both playing pretty well. Yeah, I don't know if maybe Braden kind of got shook up on that on that spill that happened there on that foul. Looks to be limping a little bit. Yeah, he's got his hands on his hips and not like in a I'm tired way, but in a like freak that hurt way. Yeah, he's he's been having some problems with his hip. <laughs> to add to the other list of things. <laughs> Pasquale looking for Jason Shaw on the run down here. Great step by number two for the Yellow Jackets. And I really thought he was going to get lit up by Caleb there. I'm glad glad Caleb realized where he was and what was going on pulled out of that great hustle play by boomer to get back and clear that out frank easily gathers that one in tells the team to calm down jason wins the throw in for the highlanders Throw through the chest of Miguel. Shaw wins another throw in for the Highlanders. That's a good chance here. Got a corner kick coming. Corner kick for the Highlanders. (laughs) 
Oh. Oh. Kale just. Kale looking for the big finish there. Does what you see done so often. You just yes. you get under that volley and just blast it over the top of the goal. I think that's one of those eyes get big. Yep. Like, uh, I have this whole goal to shoot Yes. At. Touch plays better than a power play there for sure. Dom wins the foul there. They go, going to look for a service. Boomer's coming up, so we're going to look for a service into the box there. Put the trees in the middle. <laughs> I don't know, that guy from Choctaw is a pretty big feller. Number five. Five, there. yeah. I think Boomer looked up and was like, I really got it. Let me find I somebody like, He's as tall as I am. This isn't fair anymore. <laughs> He's used to having that advantage. As the defense works back, and the Highlanders try to find their shape again. Slowed the attack down pretty well. Dominic for forced the mistake that turns into a Highlander throw in. Just great. Great job by the Highlanders on possession. When they lose, they gain back quick. They seem to be clicking on all cylinders tonight so far. I agree. I think they're just they're as a whole, as a team, as a unit. They've they seem very much into the game, just focused and um, energy levels up. And yeah, they're doubt in. Yeah. Substitution here for the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets trying to set up some attack here. Well done by Caleb to defend that. Ball off the head of Wayne. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He's that feeling did that not one. feel good. Good service. Oh, my gosh. Frank getting caught coming out. Oh, we got lucky there. Lucky break for the Highlanders. Oh, goes out for a corner kick. Even so, that's better than being in the back of the net. Yeah, already. which is where I thought it was headed. Around the 16-minute mark left in this first half. Highlanders up 1-0 in the first half, brought to you by Lawton Bail Bonds. And, of course, our title sponsor, Lawton Marketing Group. Ball being dinged around back there inside the penalty area. And eventually gets sent out for a goal kick. Like, out, out, out. Can't see it from here, but it goes a little ways back here. Kel Kinder back on the ball. Plays the ball up for Dominic Collins to run on to. We know Dominic got some speed on him. Great job by the Highlanders. Yeah. Put that high pressure on. Force that error by the keeper. Forcing him to send the ball out of bounds.
A little hold up here with the ball being sent far enough out of bounds to <laughs> slow things down. You a couple see the players, <laughs> A couple of players tying shoes. Ball gets thrown in. Referee is not quite tall enough to jump for it. <laughs> he's like, dude, who were you throwing that to? <laughs> now he's saying the ball is underinflated. <laughs> okay, we got some New England Patriots deflate gate going on here. <laughs> He likes this one. I didn't know Tom Brady was at Choctaw High School tonight. Oh, just a little bit too heavy of a touch there by oh, Kale. Here but we go. When won the ball back, gets the ball up to Wayne. Oh. Kale looked like he wanted a shot there, just kind of mishit it. And it was a good idea. There it is. Pasquale on the shot, oh. though. It's a good strike. Goalkeeper with a great catch. Great strike by Pasquale. Oh, look at the hustle play. Micah with the hustle, just the hustle and the physicality to win that ball back. A lot of. Colorful language here. <laughs> Pasquale's telling him to watch it. <laughs> no, it was the it was the Choctaw coach. I think it was number twenty one here. Pa Pasquale was telling somebody to watch it, like to watch their language. I think, oh, I think was he? he was just having fun. He was talking to. He might have been talking to the same guy that the Choctaw coach was talking to. I don't know. He was all smiles about whatever it was. Oh, what a move! Oh, Boomer just couldn't quite get to that one. Pasquale got to be careful with the yeah with the arguing there. Miguel with. Miguel pushes that ball out in front of him with the head. Calling a handball there on Miguel. Yeah. I didn't see it, but he was right there on top of it. Yeah, he's right there. Tough call, but Islanders got to get back and defend the long kick now. That well, ball is right. He is long. Five's a big dude. I was figuring he could probably send it long. Yeah. Boy's got a big old foot. And so does Frank. Yep. <laughs> Frank's like, yeah, well, here you That's go. That's misplayed by the Choctaw <laughs> defense. Jason Shaw getting some relief. Looks like Brylin Phelps going to come in. Jason Shaw, outstanding job stepping in to start off this game. Yeah, played really well. You got Romeo coming in to play center forward and Wayne dropping back into the midfield for Kale Kinder. Kale, Kale Kinder also really stepping well in well. very yep. well. Wow. Just, just a push, all that is. He played the advantage. Highlanders maintained. Kind of surprised they didn't put Braden back in. He was having a pretty good game, but he might be a little banged up. You know, I'm just I'm impressed with the with the level of uh, intensity and attack that we're bringing to um, to the game. Really, in all phases, I feel like we are just leaning forward on our toes, aggressive. We lose the ball. We're right there to There's go get Micah. It back. Oh, just what a shot! Oh boy, Micah just offside on that one, hitting the back post. Beautiful shot.
Ball, ball wisely played back to Frank to regain control. Caleb quickly caught Romeo with a wide open run there in space. Pasquale wins that matchup. Gets the ball over to Wayne. Wayne looking at Dominic. Oh. Really want to see Dominic, you know, kind of take off forward with that ball. Instead of ruining that moment, you know, instead of dropping that momentum that they had going forward. I don't know if that's just a lack of soccer experience and you just don't feel super comfortable with the ball at your feet while you're under tight pressure like that. And yeah. You just you feel like you're probably going to lose it in that situation, and so you say, let's maintain possession and I'll just drop it and catch me on the run next time, right? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know I can fly. Hit me running. Right. Put it out in front and let me go get it. Caleb with the no-nonsense clearance there. <laughs> Put the ball about 40 yards out of play. Nobody in a hurry to go get it. Frank going to get the one from beside the goal. There. It's a great hustle play by Dominic just to come in and put that pressure. Man, he was close. And Romeo there this. gets the pressure, gets the ball down to Pasquale. That oh. one's deflected, goes out of bounds for a Highlander corner kick. You see what I'm saying, though? I mean, they're just they're so they're, they're on winning. the attack. They're the, winning to the ball. They want it. Yeah, the difference between the way that – the boys' team is playing tonight, and the way the ladies played earlier this evening, um, just with the level of intensity, the winning to the ball, the being on the attack, on your toes. Look oh, at that. Goes to the backside off Pasquale's chest into the goal. Highlanders up 2 0. That's another one for your Highlanders. Braden Frederick and Pasquale Arredondo on the scoreboard for the Highlanders. Five, almost six minutes left in this first half. Yeah. I know we talked, I talked earlier with uh, Eric Sherum on an OSN podcast about tonight's matchup and Thursday's matchup and what the Highlanders need to get do to get to the playoffs and I told him it was two beatable teams, definitely, that we were playing against, but it doesn't mean that we'll come out and fire on all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, beatable doesn't mean easy. No, absolutely and, not. And that doesn't mean you don't have to go do it. And, and any team's beatable any day of the week. That's right. You know, uh, uh, I think they're – because I did say about them, you know, there's some games where they just don't come out firing on all cylinders. Yep. And I think they're making me eat my words. <laughs> Tonight it's a good is, thing. Tonight is not one of those nights. Not upset about it. <clears throat> Out for a corner kick for the Yellow Jackets. We were making a big physical play back here on defense. To, for the save. Yeah. Yeah. Helping out Frankie. Just to, to shut that attack down for sure. Helping out Frankie back there. Ooh. I think Micah got up with everything he could get up with and <laughs> just went barely over, over his head. It might have hit the poof a little bit. <laughs> the poof can't redirect a ball, though. No, not usually. <laughs> Frank content to take his time. If he's not being hurried by the referee, then he's going to take his time and try to get to the half. Nice ball. Nice run, actually. Got work coming up the sideline. Good work by Micah to win that on the sideline. 
He's just getting beat up over there, too. Ty takes a shoulder into the back. Pasquale just directing traffic out there. So a little, a little history of why I was so excited about Braden scoring that, that goal. The the last competitive game Braden played was on this field before his Is Liz, that right? Before his Liz Frank surgery. And he was already injured and scored two goals. Dang. And Coach Flash was kind of up in arms when I called him the next day to say, Hey, Braden has to have surgery on yeah, Thursday. Oh gosh, I bet he was. But to make his return to this field not injured and get a score again and get that huge shot from distance and it wasn't just the shot from distance man he set himself up I and mean, he made the, the yeah, strong the run, run up yeah. the wing made that just, just sharp cut into the left to set himself up for that shot oh beautiful dominic almost with a big chance there with the goalkeeper out and making a bad touch Goalkeeper saved it from going out of bounds for a, a corner kick, but Darnier played it right into Dominic's feet with being out of the goal. Boomer's going to throw this one at the goal. <clears throat> Big header and foot clearance coming out for the <coughs> Yellow Jackets. <clears throat> Boomer getting back well and making done. a huge defensive play. <coughs> On the counterattack of the Highlanders. Just kind of slowed up. Didn't really have the numbers. Browning with a big shot off the football crossbar. Trying to redo that look he had on Thursday night. <laughs> That's a good shot, man. I mean, he pulls that down a foot, foot and a half, and there's no way the keeper stops it. Boomer with the foul there. Not a bad foul to take, to be honest. <clears throat> Referee having a chat. From being in that position, uh, I can tell you, you never know what was being said by that player. It, yeah. It's a wide range. <laughs> Highlanders with 11 men behind the ball there. Just trying to avoid giving up that easy goal with 30 seconds left with in the 30 half. 30 seconds, and how often do you see it happen? You oh, know, you just craziness. Play a great half, dominate the half, and um, and then give something up sloppy in the last 30 seconds or a minute. It just I've seen it too many times. Yeah. Not with this team, just in general. In general, yeah, it happens all the time. Looks like the Highlander's going to take this 2-0 lead into the half with that clearance by Ty Tate. Birthday boy. And so we're going to end the half with the Highlanders up 2-0. We'll come back and talk about it near the end of halftime. Rich Frederick, Kobe Edwards, John Burke from the Oklahoma Sports Network. Hey, what's going on? I switched to H&R Block this year and had one of their experts do my taxes for me. Kind of a big win. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they're so on top of it. They guaranteed my taxes were 100% accurate. And my maximum refund or I get my money back. Wow, nice. I don't even know if my guy's got any guarantees. You should definitely switch it up. We're going to go do a victory lap now. Get a 100% accurate return and your max refund or your money back. It's better with...
Oh, look how sad. Everybody but you has a debit card, and they're all out having fun, shopping, dining, feeling good. And here you are with crumpled cash and counting change. Not a good look, pal. Sounds like your wallet needs a friend. That friend is a pay me debit card from Communication Federal Credit Union. Use your free pay me card in apps, in stores, and anywhere you shop. You're good to go. Come into any branch and open your account in as little as 10 minutes or go to comfedcu.org. Communication Federal. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home, or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. Waste is dirty. You need a solution. At Waste Solutions, we offer residential trash services for Lawton's outlying communities. We are a locally owned company. We're fast, professional, and affordable. High quality customer service is our number one focus, and we deliver every time. We love Southwest Oklahoma, and we take care of our own. Every problem has a solution. Waste Solution. Call or click today. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A Better Design Flowers and Gifts is under new ownership, and we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. At Miller Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we offer preventive maintenance agreements, summer tune-ups, and service calls. During the summer when your air conditioner breaks, you have to give us a call. We'll with preventive maintenance agreements that prevents that. We go out, service the air conditioners, and prep them so they don't fail on you in the peak time of the year. The U.S. Department of Energy states that you can save up to 30% of your utility bill by having your system properly maintenanced. real red wine vinegar and olive oil blend. It's called the juice. And at Jersey Mike's, it adds that jazz to your sub. Add a flavor zing with the juice. Jersey Mike's. A sub above. Lawton's newest hangout, 5370 Northwest Cash Road. A family-friendly atmosphere featuring their award-winning pizza and calzone. Made fresh daily from their secret family recipe. With handcrafted burgers, wings, appetizers, salad, and homemade desserts, including deep-fried banana pudding. Come hang out with us. The Hangout, 5370 Northwest Cash Road in Lawton. Scooter's Coffee, world-class coffee rooted in quality. 
with two locations to serve you in Lawton and Elgin. Wake up to the amazing aroma of quality from their hot and ice drinks to blenders, smoothies, teas, to even their great food delights. Or why not try their at-home coffees or coffee on the go? Locally owned and operated, Scooters in Lawton and Elgin. Scooters, rooted in quality. At Whitehead Plumbing, our mission is to be a leading full-service plumbing contractor. We have dedicated over 20 years perfecting our expertise in Southwest Oklahoma with our craftsmanship and customer service. Whether you have a water, sewer, or gas line that needs to be replaced or repaired, you can always count on us to be there. We offer free estimates and have 24-7 emergency services available. We'll work around the clock and are committed to providing our customers with impeccable services. Call Whitehead Plumbing today for all your plumbing needs. From Medicine Park to Elgin to Chickasha, communities big and small thrive on the ability to connect. Whether out in the country, shopping downtown, at home, or work, communication is the cornerstone of our lives, allowing us to go from point A to point B in the blink of an eye. It's the common thread linking our lives together. You need a partner that will stay on top of technological changes while providing services that exceed the common standard. Our desire every day is to improve and expand the way you connect. We're Hillary Communications, your local service provider. When it comes to showing your loved ones you care, you need the best. A better design, flowers and gifts is under new ownership. And we're proud to be serving the people of Southwest Oklahoma. Our talented florists are committed to building the most beautiful floral arrangements, as well as providing superior customer service. We service all types of events, from weddings to funerals, just because gifts, and of course, holidays. We're also a veteran-owned company. Click, call, or come by today. We'd love to show you a better design. College is more than just going to class. College is a journey. It's meeting new people and making new friendships that will last a lifetime. It's learning from professors who care about you and your success. And finding out it can be really fun and rewarding. It's discovering that thing you want to do for the rest of your life. Cameron University is all about helping you grow and succeed. Because your success is our success. Here at Classic Lawton Chevrolet, we love our community and we want to show our appreciation. We offer savings for military, first responders, college students, and educators. Giving back to those who give everything they've got. What's, What's in, in your, your driveway? driveway? You don't have to come onto the lot, we'll bring it to you. Get a 360 degree view and video summary of every vehicle. Top dollar for your trade and even get pre-approved. ClassicChevyNation.com What's, What's in, in your, your driveway? driveway? Enjoy the day. At Miller Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we offer preventive maintenance agreements, summer tune-ups, and service calls. During the summer when your air conditioner breaks, you have to give us a call. We'll with preventive maintenance agreements that prevents that. We go out, service the air conditioners, and prep them so they don't fail on you in the peak time of the year. The U.S. Department of Energy states that you can save up to 30% of your utility bill by having your system properly maintenanced. All right, we are back at you here. Rich Frederick, Kobe Edwards, John Burke on the camera with the Oklahoma Sports Network, ready for kickoff of the second half of this men's match. Highlanders coming out of halftime, up 2-0. Uh, Kobe, if I'm coach, I'm telling the, telling the boys, uh, to don't, don't take your foot off the gas. Let's keep going. Yeah. Right. Y'all look great. Keep it up. Yeah, we need the margin of victory. We need the confidence. You know? Yeah, your intensity is the Yeah the, is is the difference maker. You're just out there overwhelming this team. Scoreboard lady was wanting us to play twenty minute half this half, uh so we got it fixed I think now. <laughs> I think we all like to go home early, so it's it's not the end yeah, of the I'm, world. I'm okay. We have a long drive. Yeah. So we're kicked off here. Forty more minutes of soccer left. Here in Choctaw. 
Highlanders trying to make their mark on this match. Good play there by Brylin Phelps on the sideline. Nice move. Looking to get across Great or get a shot strike. in there. Braden trying to come up and put some pressure on the goalkeeper just a little late. Well, and just getting there in case, you know, he was late for pressure, but he was, I'd say, basically just on time for a mishandle by the keeper, able to put something in. And, man, Boomer got – they got behind Boomer there, and he was he was doing everything he could to get caught back up. And, yeah, those those counterattacks, though, they're going to – They are. They, they have the potential they to are really bite us in the butt. They are a counterattacking team, man. You better be ready. So our second half brought to you by H&R Block and, of course, our title sponsor, Lot and Marketing Group. H&R Block, I know it's uh, past tax day. That was yesterday. But you can still file a amended return or a 1040X. You can't just make stuff up, Rich. A 1040X. Rich, I mean, Rich, used, to work, Rich used to work at H&R Block. You can't just make stuff up. <laughs> Rich has done a little bit of everything. C-43T, you, know you can still file that <laughs> until January 77th. Right, go to H&R Block. just make stuff up. Go to H&R Block. They have the guys that will give you the perfect advice <laughs> if you have not filed your taxes yet or if you're doing your quarterly payments or whatnot. Just talk to them. They'll hook you up with some advice. Talk to them. Don't talk to Rich about it. I don't know. Big ball crossed by Ty with Wayne on the run. Wayne looking to pass oh, ball in the good. middle. Gets to Brylin. Oh, Rylan with the right-footed shot this Ryland time. Rylan is looking to shoot tonight, baby. I like it. Ball goes up over, but he's having those shots. And he doesn't need much. You give him a little bit of a look, he's going to take it. Yeah. Small windows of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Misplayed by the Yellow Jackets on the sideline there. Out for a Highlander throw. Good chip up over by Ty, controlled by Kale Kinder back in the match. It was great work by Kale to get back to it, too, you know, just to, to see that play coming and to to win to the ball. A lot of uh, work there by Brylin and Romeo on the sideline. Romeo on the run. He has some speed. He cuts it inside, has the shot. That one goes out for a Highlander throw. Boomer's going to come up. As soon as that ball started going out of bounds, he started running up forward. He, <laughs> he knows his role. Well, he's the guy, right? He's got this massive throw in. He can just drop it right into the box. and so just Braden tried to jump there. I don't think his feet ever left the ground, though. I think he tried to, He made, the, made it look good, though. <laughs> Just over his head. Ball ends up out for a yellow jacket goal kick. Once again with the... Once again, with the intensity there and just, I mean, just chasing that down. Just outworking everybody. Yeah, and absorbing like a foul where referee ended up playing advantage. And Kale Kinder on the shot now, too, getting in on the action. Good look. This goalkeeper has definitely <laughs> earned his keep tonight. <laughs> Put some work in. And, and and it's good that we can make it a goalkeeper on their keep. Absolutely. Kale okay, well, wanting to look for one of the forwards on a run. Nobody there. Braden comes back to support Ty. Out for a yellow jacket throw. Once again, it is out, out, over the fence. 
Over the first fence, not the second fence. Great job by Wayne to put some pressure on and force an error there by the Choctaw defense. Tyreek Tate going to take the throw in. Good job by Kale Kinder there, just trying to stay on possession for the Highlanders. Well, comes just... back. Wayne's going to try to force an error here. Miguel wins that ball coming out of their offensive end. Only thing I could say negative, honestly, about Kale Kinder tonight is just the. I, I think he needs to step up the physicality oh, a little bit. That goodness. is just absolutely dirty. That was rough through the back. Yeah. There was nothing even about playing a ball to that. I don't know if he just tripped or I mean it, I just I don't know if he how tripped, you just, I, wouldn't I don't know it. how you run through the back yeah. of somebody like that. If he, he tripped I'm, I'll take back what I said. Yeah. I think it was it didn't look like he did from here. Anyways, free kick for Pasquale. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got Caleb Caleb on the finish on that one. Another senior getting involved in the action. Highlanders up 3-0. They're taking this uh, having to win out to make it into the playoffs very seriously tonight, I believe. Yeah, you know, I, it's honestly tonight is a, just a great lesson in – how you control so much of your own destiny. If you come out yeah. and play like this, um, there, you just you can overcome a lot. And you know it's the tale of two teams this evening, and uh, both teams very talented, both teams very capable. Um, meaning both MacArthur teams, and uh, one came out flat and just with nothing that you know really to play for, and um, it's That's not a, a lot of effort. Big ball over the top for Choctaw. Sorry to interrupt you. You're here, good. And and then and then the guys coming out just on fire. I mean, they are just all over the place. They're swarming. They're con they challenge absolutely everything happening on the field. Super hard pressure up on the offensive side of the field and super great hustle to get back on the defensive side of the field. They're just they're playing relentlessly. They're playing the Highlander soccer that we knew we could see from the mm -hmm. beginning of the Season and just had to be brought out in them. Miguel Martinez again having a, a wonderful night. Our whole midfield really impressive tonight. Good thing about about the the men's group too is just to to watch them just get better and better throughout the season. I feel like they've grown as a team. I feel like they've grown. Um, and their soccer as a team, just in how they play with, you know, the game with one another and um, and work together as a team. They've just they've just gotten better. The trajectory has continued to yeah, improve as the season is rising. Gone. That's right. And, you know, you kind of want a couple of those early games back, you know, to kind of see what, what could happen had they been playing this yeah. kind of soccer. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, too, is that, that so much of what we're seeing tonight is just that intensity, and it's something that you as an athlete and as a team are entirely in control of. Yeah, you, you and can, this is not a pushover Choctaw team. You know, this, yeah. is, this is not a team no, that's just totally. going to lay over or, or not have the skill to beat you. Wayne on the pressure. Ball gets off to Ty. Ty puts it up to Braden. Braden gets kind of beat out of the air there. Ooh. Caleb out hustles, and I don't know how you call a foul when both of them come in with a shoulder like that and they both make uh, contact. But that's 19 went to the ground. That's probably why. <laughs> Choctaw free kick. Probably good 21 yards from the goal.
Miguel wisely staying put where he was mm-hmm. to make the referee back off and do what we call a ceremonial free kick so there can't be a quick quick kick coming in at Frank. Ball comes through. Well, that was beautifully set up by Choctaw, and they just missed the connection on missed, the backside. Missed by but everybody there. That was that was dangerous, man. That was a really great service. It was. When everybody was set up to get the header on the backside, and it just – I don't – it's hard to tell from this angle what happened. But yeah. But you were, they were all ready. They were all looking for it, and just nobody was able to connect with it. But, man, Frank, he would add some hard work coming his way if somebody oh, had yeah. connected. That ball's headed over by number five from Choctaw. Miguel with a rare missed touch and then working hard to win the ball back. Yep. <clears throat> Which has just been characteristic of this evening for for MacArthur. Yeah. Just the the work ethic, the work rate. Cal Kinder having a great game. Like I said, a little more physicality would be great from him, but not absolutely necessary. Well, I think once he gets into a more more of a starting role, I think he'll kind of catch that. He'll pick that up. Big defensive Good play stop. by Braden getting back. Lose the ball. A little too many touches, maybe. Wins a Highlander throw. Stays down for a second. It looked like his boot came off. <laughs> Ref's about had it. Referee said no uh, more. Somebody's about to get a card if they don't clean it up is what I feel like is coming. I don't know if it's clean it up or shut their mouths. But yeah, whatever way. it is, he, he's frustrated by whatever it is. That's either going way, on he's had there. enough. You can hear it, John. The John, John Burke, our cameraman, it. out. He's he's had to set up just outside the the booth, and so he's a little closer to the field and got an unobstructed. Uh, hearing, I guess, of it, and he says he can hear it. It's just nonstop chatter back and forth between these two teams. Chatter is probably – that's a very kind word for it, I would yeah. guess. Yeah, I, mean, I just think – I'll be honest, at this point in the match, there's, if if you're the Highlanders, there's no reason for it. Right. You know, you don't want to get pulled into it. And you definitely don't want to be the one starting it. And you definitely don't be the, want to be the one on the other end of uh, of a card either. Yeah, we have some guys that if they get a card here, they miss senior night against Elgin. Oh, ooh, I'm man. not sure if Pasquale was one of those guys, but, you know, if you have someone like Pasquale missing senior night, that's that's a big hit, dude. That hurts. Yep. You know, not just for the team, but for him as a senior. Well, and just it, it's it's the senior night and even – you know, I would say even more importantly for the – Oh, that ball was almost through. For the team, that's a, it's a must win. For the team and for the individual, it's a must win game. So you need you need yeah. everybody there. Yep. Can't be having people sitting out. So it's nice to see them picked up, pick up, though, tonight with, uh, with Jason Ford out, our usual nine. And really a big pace setter for this team. Um, yeah, physically and, and, and – Speed, physicality, yeah. and just, I mean, he, the, the intensity that he has, has brought, especially late this season, second half of this season, I'd say. Um, he's just – he's really been a leader in that way, driving tempo for, for this, this MacArthur squad. and um, 
So it's great to see this team playing like they are, playing with that level of intensity with, without him out there being a part of it. Ball played nicely for yeah, Braden up there. Oh, Looking to play Carter Wayne on the run. Going. Got Wayne on the Ooh, run with a beautiful oh. spin on it, and Romeo swiped in oh. for it. Braden's going to try to win to this. He did win to it, but just – oh, he didn't win to it. We won the ball, though. We got the ball on a throw in. That means Boomer's coming down the field for a big throw. Yeah, you'd like to see them take that throw quick, though. Just make the throw. He had Kale send there in the wide open, you know? Yeah. Especially once you've done this with Boomer several times and catch him, catch him expecting it. Braden oh. on the hit just goes wide. He volleyed it twice before he put it on the ground to hit it. That was kind of won a little bit of a. That was nice. Had a good chance. John says it's because he jerked the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sent it out of bounds. Great to see Braden having a good game, though, tonight. Absolutely. And he of, has, man. He's looked really good. A lot of confidence lately has been, you know, kind of lacking. and He's had a couple of good games here and there. It's been sporadic. So for him to have a few here in a row has been pretty nice. I think all very predictable, honestly. You've got a, a, a good, talented player who suffered a tough injury, had to go through surgery and rehabilitation, uh, was away from the game for, for, for a good long spell. And you come back and you're just not quite who you were because you've been sitting uh, and you're not quite confident in your body yet because you had yeah. a massive injury and surgery. Um, and so it just it takes time to – to rebuild your touch to exactly what it was, to rebuild your fitness and conditioning to what it was, and to rebuild your confidence in your body that it's not going to let you down when you, yeah, and he you said know, it take a the, wrong step or something. In the interview on Thursday with him and Coach, you know, he said it. He's it's still in the back of his mind to an extent. Right. Less and less, though. Every game, every time he goes out clean and comes away clean, it just – Good touch over. That ball's up in for Wayne. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, come on. They had him. So tough. Oh. Great job by the Choctaw defense and goalkeeper, though, to close him out of that. Miguel working hard to maintain possession there. That oh, one comes wow. off a defender. You got a hold of that. Oh. Oh, just a missed touch there yep. by Braden. See the wingers starting to get warmed up on the sideline there, Dominic and Micah. About halfway through the half is usually when they switch them up because you may not see it a whole lot, but those wingers are the ones running probably the most on the field. Their responsibility is on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Ball being brought back. Referee tried to play advantage, but it didn't materialize. Chalked off with a free kick from about 47 yards out. Wow. Just miscommunicated there. I don't know if that young man, number two over there, even thought uh, about the ball coming in. I play. think he did. I think it was a set play that they that they've they've looked very practiced, like they knew what was coming, and I think he just got way too much on that pass. He was trying to lay it out in front of him and Romeo making this run. I think Braden's tired at this point. <laughs> Romeo made that run beautifully to come across there. Way to force a bad touch by Wayne. 
Boomer coming up. Braden with another strike. Did it hit anyone on the way through? Nope. Out for a goal kick for the Yellow Jackets. It was just that wide. <laughs> <laughs> surely it was redirected. Like surely it hit someone. It couldn't have been that it wide, bounced right? Bounced off of somebody. It's all right. Nothing wrong with missing. Nothing wrong with missing bad. No. Just keep shooting. All right. Forward's coming up. Put pressure on. Miguel and Kale. Good call. Working in the midfield there, and this is a pretty dangerous spot for the free kick. Got heads in there that can flick it on, or heck, Pasqual might even just put this on frame. That's a long way out, but. Big, big counterattack here for Choctaw. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Miguel's going to get him a yellow card here for stopping a promising attack. Looks like they're moving Kale as a defensive midfielder. Wayne as an attacking midfielder and bringing Micah in to play as a center forward right now. With more substitutes waiting in the wing. I don't think Miguel's one of those ones that's in any kind of yellow card trouble, though. And, what I was just wondering. And let's be honest, I mean, take that foul there. We know it's a yellow card for stopping the promising attacks. Tactical foul. But you take that card every time. Yeah, and his teammates were yelling it. Take the card, take the card, take the card. Like, just, it was a good foul. Take your punishment and move yeah. on and don't make it worse. Yeah, some of these boys are saying got a lot left in the tank. 13 minutes left, or 18 minutes left in the match. Braden coming off. Romeo come off too. Wayne coming off. So we got Miguel back on. We got Ben Jones on as the left wing. Dominic in as the right winger. And you got to think, barring a, A series of unfortunate events that that's the, the last we'll see of those gentlemen tonight. I would imagine so. You know, I'm just I'm just thinking, though, just strategically as of, of game management, I, you're going to make – so we do three substitutions there? Yeah. I'd, I'd much prefer to do those one at a time, build a little continuity as you sub people in, let them meld into the team and, yeah. and things go well and – You've got the lead, you're up, and you're wanting to burn the clock, so let's burn the clock with three different substitutions um, rather than one big mass substitution, which I'm just, I've am just i never been a fan of anyway. But to your earlier point, I think you're probably right. We've seen the last of those gentlemen. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> Great job by Miguel again. Oof. Unfortunate bounce. Yeah, a bad bounce off of Kale's chest there. Just Kale, like that play there, you know, when Kale was trying to work that guy off the ball, he just needs to get that physicality down. I don't know if it's a hit the gym or don't be afraid to hit him harder. You know what I'm saying? Or, or drop 
you know, a little more weight into that shoulder. I don't want to see him hurt anyone, but he has to be able to move someone off the ball, especially in the middle of the field. Yeah, you know, and, I, and some, some players have just never – they've never played that way. Maybe they've never been coached that way. And so it is it is absolutely something you can practice, though, just leaning in with your shoulder, really getting comfortable playing in a very much a yeah. – where everybody's – you're touching. You know, yep. you're just you're, – it's body on body. You're fighting for the ball. It's very physical. It's something you can practice, not in a way where you're being dangerous or putting people in jeopardy. Just you're literally practicing just that. And well, Frank getting on the scramble there. That was, was a dangerous spot. Yeah. Goodness gracious. A lot of panic feeling going on right there. But but yeah, to your point, I mean, you you can learn that. You can practice that. And a lot of these guys, they don't they don't see that at club ball. They don't see that level of physicality anyways. Work by number eight here from Choctaw. Frank playing a little cat and mouse back there. <laughs> Burning some time. Yeah. 20 seconds is 20 seconds off the yeah, clock right it there. all matters. Just over the 14-minute mark. AR having a chat with Dominic over here. And I think I heard a thank you from them when they got done. Like, they talked. She was done. She was backing up. And from what I could hear, he turned and thanked her for whatever it was that he she told him. So, yeah, I like the – That's good. The good um, sportsmanship, I guess you would say. So it's a great way to conduct yourself. There was a few times he was – right in front of the bench there and kind of looking into the bench. I don't know if he was talking or they were talking or what, but. Like I said before, at high school ball, you never know. And there aren't really limits on what they say either, unfortunately. A lot of creativity. Not really. I, I, think, Not no, really. I, think, I think there is. I don't think creativity is the word I'd use. <laughs> It's mixed with some other stuff, but I think there's quite a bit of creativity, actually. Ben Jones with the hustle play, there. trying to get to that. Tough ball to control, though. i say there's a lot of colorful. Colorful creativity. Wording in there. Pressure applied by Micah. I tell you what, when you got when you got a kid like Micah and the way he's come off the bench the last few games and just playing like an absolute baller, uh it's just such a big big advantage as a coach to have that in your hip pocket, you know? No doubt. And I mean really I think to Micah's credit and to several others, I think this team's got a good number of players like that that can that just come in off the bench and you really have no letdown from where you were, you yeah. know, from from your starter. Yeah, and I like and I've talked. There's a couple of people that are kind of frustrated with not playing or whatever, and, and it's like, like the good thing but bad thing is you're playing behind such and such. You know, that's that's the starter in that position and. They're they're on their game right now. Right. You know? <laughs> Tie with the birthday nutmeg there. <laughs> Boy. Pasquale almost got Dominic through on that last time last ball upfield. Brylon turns and has a shot. Once again, man, Brylon just, just having a shot, looking to shoot. Just no, there's no thought, no unnecessary touches. 
turn and shoot. Great job by Pasquale mm. to gain and maintain possession there. Ball's just a little bit out of reach, Ben Jones. But sent out by Choctaw for a Highlander corner kick. Another substitution coming in. Kale's going to get a break. Wayne coming in for him. Give that man a round of applause. Kale had a heck of a game tonight. Great job. Has played really well. By the young freshman. If his folks aren't here in the stadium, I'm sure they're watching and pretty darn proud of how he played. Very proud, yeah, as they should be. I have not seen them here, so I'm guess well, I guess they might be across the way, but Casey kind of lays low sometimes. He'll be here and just you never see him. Ball off the hand of Wayne. And he did the ultimate the ultimate no no and throw his <laughs> hands up like he didn't touch it. That's like the universal sign for I did something I did wrong. Yeah. Please don't please don't call it. Caleb corrals the ball. He's having a pretty good game tonight too. Nice. Ball goes out for a Highlander throw in. Man, that was the right, that's intent the entire time, right? I think he so. set that up beautifully. I think so. It's a smart play. Well, I was starting to get kind of worried on that counterattack, though. Dominic getting back on the defensive side of the ball. Just denying space, denying the ability to cross with speed and just in your face yeah. being a pest. Hustle. Looks like the Highlanders have some more substitutes ready to come in. Is that Ja'Shawn Cole coming Braden's on? Braden's coming back on. And Braden's coming back on. So we get Ja'Shawn coming up. And as a center forward. Micah going in at left back. I guess Dominic came out. I'll tell you what, man. Frank has been, with just the way we're positioned here, we've been able to hear him all the second half. And yeah. He has been nonstop vocal. Um, and that's and, and, and that's Frank, though, always. So good. So good at telling his defense where he needs them, when he needs them there, and with confidence, like, but with no attitude either. Total yeah. confidence, but with, he's none of the whining, none of the getting frustrated with this team. He's just – it's just matter of fact, confident matter of fact telling you what he's seeing and what you need to do. Yeah, no, so, it's just nonstop, so I saw man. It this just fall, talking. This fall was his first year with the 2006 boys from sporting. And uh, he stepped in there, first match, just controlling things, telling everyone where to be. And it just, even those boys that didn't know him, right, because he spoke with confidence and he was right 90% of the time, you know, it just, everyone just kind of fell in line. But you can do it in such a way where you've got this tone and how you're doing it that just makes everybody want to not listen to you. Yeah. Because you're acting like you're the, you know, the, the boss of everything and people just, 
people just don't like that. Yeah. And he's just no. he's not doing it that way though. He's doing it I think he's just he's handling it perfectly and it's just been fun to get to hear his all his chatter all night long. Um really good stuff. It's important. A keeper should be doing it. He is the quarterback or the point guard back there. Yep. That ball swung the whole way back to the center backs. Got about five and a half minutes left in this match. The Highlanders, they want to just play keep away here. I mean, if there's an opportunity to score, I'm sure they're they're not going to pass it up the way they've been shooting tonight. Yeah, right now just slowing the game down. Until there. Braden makes the turn, gets on the run. I think Braden looking up like I wasn't trying to hurt no one. I totally agree. I wasn't trying to hurt no one. <laughs> I think he was as confused with what was going on as as the ref was. Yeah, like 100% it was a foul, but I wasn't trying to hurt him. I swear. Oh, my gosh. That one giving up in the last – Five minutes on a play that really should have never happened. So there's those, you know, that one that, uh, like we were talking about Uh with the first half, where you just show them enough light at at the end of the half. Which, you know, I think what just happened is indicative of what you see a lot of times in sports. You've got a team with the lead. They're trying to protect it. And so they changed their philosophy on, on how they're approaching the game. Yeah. And we, we, and we totally went into just a, a possession, trying to slow the game down, uh, not on the attack. He had Pasquale on the back line, I think, for, 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 Pretty that, darn near, yeah. for that last while there. And, um it's just we weren't playing the same game anymore. So all of a sudden, we're not the ones bringing the pressure. We're just trying to absorb the pressure. and Trying to eat it up, eat up some time. Yep, and Choctaw is a different team all of a sudden because you're a different team. Oh, that quick free kick might come back to bite him in the butt there. Not. Ty just lost track of where he was on the field, I think. And gets beat by the boundary line there. Boomer plays that out for a corner kick. You hear a little bit of the the arguing and griping starting to come back to the Highlanders. And so how you deal with adversity is just as important as how you deal with being up 3-0. to zero. A little bit of adversity near the end of the match. Choctaw's not going away. Right. Three minutes left. Especially not now. And they don't think it's over yet. Comes across, goes out for a corner. I think, I mean, I would say, honestly, Choctaw probably was pretty much ready to go away. I mean, they were, you know, you keep your foot on the gas. There's just a handful of minutes left. and Yeah, they made a huge substitution, so I don't know if that was – you're in control of the game, and then you just you take your foot off the gas. You relax. We're going to try to possess and burn some time, and um, and they took advantage of it. Now they're definitely yeah. in the game. I mean, you go score, and you've, now you've got hope. Last thing you want to give your opponent is hope. So we got two and a half minutes left, barring any wild happenings here. Who do you got for man of the match, Kobe? And I don't know, honestly. I got a few. I've, I've been so impressed across the board with how this team has played. Um, I don't know. I wasn't ready for the question, and and I know you I weren't just, ready for the question. That's I just, why I asked. I, I wasn't ready for the answer either. <laughs> <laughs> I've been ac- impressed across the board. I, I will say that uh, that uh, Pasquale and Braden, I felt like, really came out with 
just great intensity and great play both. Yeah, and I think – And just set the tone for this match for, yeah. for the Highlanders. And I think Caleb on the back line, too, along with scoring a goal, he's played quite well. But I, I agree. I think they kind of set the tone for the match, and he's going to try to do it again here. Do it. That'd make it easy for us. Oh, off the crossbar. Oh Brayden with a strike. Gosh. Micah's going to have a hit at it, too. Micah goes backside – Goes out for a goal kick. Braden, why couldn't you score, man? <laughs> I know. That would have just made you it easy. You scored that goal, it would have made it easy. Man of the match right and, there. And I'll tell you, I'm kind of I'm kind of at the toss-up between Braden and Pasquale also. And, and I think Braden has had the ball at his feet more than you would expect any winger to have, his, to have the ball at his feet tonight. And he's done oh my God, so flop. well with the ball. That's a great job by the ref to not call that. It was a total flop. Sorry to cut you off, man. That oh, was you're just, good. That was in the box and just looking for it. Begging for a call. Here goes another one coming through. Jason Shaw is going to be running onto this one. I didn't even realize he was back in. Jason Shaw is back in at the center forward. Another foul against Choctaw. I, I'd say at this point I'm leaning towards Braden just because he's had the ball at his feet so much for a winger. Um, and, and I'm up for debate. <laughs> I'm open for debate on that because I don't I don't like selecting that because it sounds like it's – Oh, it's always know, hard as, you're, as the it's, dad, it's you know. But that's game. But that's that's the match. So so remind me, I think, I think this is right. Braden went out. He got the first – he, he, got he was first our goal. first score. He got us on the board. Uh, it was it was a, a very impressive score as well. Uh, he had to set himself up, get the big finish. So I think I think I'm I'm good, man. Braden for a man of the match. So, I like yeah. it. Man of the match tonight, Braden Frederick, the guy that got uh, us started. The right winger got us started with the first goal of the game, and uh, we're going to leave you with that. The Oklahoma Sports Network loves bringing this to you for Highlander soccer. Rich Frederick. Kobe Edwards, John Burke on the camera. We have such a great time every week. We'll be back at it Thursday for senior night from Cameron Stadium in Lawton against Elgin. And we, y'all have a great night. We appreciate you tuning in.